All right, and we are back, not live, recording episode 63, Mike in the Playoffs versus Boston. We are recording new co-host, of course. I'm going to shout her out first because it's her first day. We're going to go back to Daniel after that. But to my right, best friend, content creator, YouTuber, uh, makeup artist, singer. Uh, <laughs> singer is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what else I'm missing, but of course, introduce yourself. Hi, it's a Grace, you know, Bankroll Grace on YouTube. Don't yep. forget to like, comment, subscribe. There we go. Um, very happy and blessed to be here. Thank you to the homies for allowing Thanks. me to be a part of this. It's like the best podcast of all time. Yes. Hi. Oh, yeah, damn, got your shades we on. Probably, I need we probably, peep. Yeah, we back. <laughs> um, it is a, an amazing day in Atlanta, Georgia. It is cold as a mother outside, but we are blessed to be here. It's at least sunny. Sunny and cold and rainy is the worst combination that yeah, exists in mankind. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, talking to the microphone, please. That's the only request. Oh, um, okay. We have a Gosh. amazing show for you today. We have a 2023 wrap-up show in 2024 because we get down like that, you feel me? Um, we also will be talking about the year ahead, what we have planned, what music has planned, and so forth and so on. So let's jump straight into it. But we're going to start with the story from 2024, my bad-ish. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> After I left, let, let me tell you, this is why I, I can't stand driving in Atlanta. Yes, sir. After we left the last episode, y'all, we told y'all we was recording. Midday, we was recording. So I got out of here at like 4.30. It's, tr it's construction, so they got like streets blocked mm -hmm. off. They got mm -hmm. detours. They got mm -hmm. cones and shit everywhere. So, you know, it's traffic. So, you know, you just come to accept some traffic. Like, I'm not like downhill trying to get through. So I'm going like 25. And I see this this line of people. So I'm like, all right, let me stop. I'm thinking it's traffic. Right. I'm watching this lady let a nigga in, mm -hmm. turning across the street. So I'm like, okay, this must be a real nice lady. Like, this got to be a good guy. Like, okay. Okay. So I, you know, skip that line, mm -hmm. go up, and I'm just going to hop in right behind you. Mm -hmm. Like, we all waiting. Fuck yeah. it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So I keep going. The I hop, I hop right in behind you. I got, like, my front tire, like, mm -hmm. right there, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you know, you know, you're just spider sense tingle. Like your your, your Peter Burger should go yeah. up. I felt her scoot up, like, scoot up. Like, you moved up. <laughs> I look back at Shorty. She looked back at me. She looked at me. I said, "Oh, she's just she playing." I'm like, okay, she see my car right here. Right, right, like, right. Was she? Was she? No, no. She. What well, was tripping me is I think white. <laughs> Caucus. I think she was at work, like driving a shuttle. Mm -hmm. Like she was in a big, like, like mm -hmm. white van. Mm -hmm. The person next to her didn't like seem to know what was going on. <laughs> so she scoot up again, and then I really look back. So now we just looking at each other. We just mm -hmm. stared at each other. I said, "You not gonna let me through?" She said, "No." <laughs> I said, "You let That's that nigga through?" <laughs> crazy. I said, "You let that nigga through?" No is crazy. She said, "No again." I said, so you going to make us wait for him? She don't say anything. I said, all right, bet. And I scooted up. <laughs> then as soon as I stopped, she do the same thing. So I'm like, okay, she think I'm pussy. Like, okay, she yeah, think I'm pussy. I'm she pussy. think I'm pussy. I'm pussy. <laughs> so I scoot up one more time and look at her. Check this out. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. Oh, my nephew. She said, ask nicely. I said, bet you. <laughs> I said, oh, In traffic? Fuck up. <laughs> In traffic? In traffic, she nicely. said, "Ask nicely." Oh, you're. I said, "Bitch, you shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> this lady Girl. had to be like forty. <laughs> Whoever in the passenger seat, that had to be the the most vulgar shit they've ever heard. <laughs> because they looked at me like I called her something. Crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> clutches pearls. Bro. Yeah, clutches pearls. That has so oh my now god. this lady. Really pissed. Like, it's cussed out a church or usher, just in case y'all was wondering. No, it was for sure. This, must have, it was a church was a, shuttle. This was so a like church van. That's why he's not shit. telling y'all. Yeah. Yeah. The number was on the side. He it was it right now. The Crazy DVD. cross on the side of this. <laughs> 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 Do you really be out there, also. like, trying to drive in Atlanta is really, like, it's like playing bumper cars. That, no. That, and, like, just, trying not to bump it's the It's crazy cars. how here we are, so. So now keep in mind, it was a detour. Mm -hmm. So the lane he was merging wasn't a straight one. Mm -hmm. oh. So, you know, me and her, we really had it, like, at an angle. Mm -hmm. Like, it was really <laughs> first nigga really wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I look back at her. I'm going. Like, me and her arguing now. <laughs> like, me and her back and forth. <laughs> and I look forward, and I see the lane start for her. But they got these little cones right here. 
And I'm like, oh, she think I'm pussy. <laughs> the light turned green. Bro, move. I drive clean through three cones <laughs> and cut her off. I look back, I'm man, man, man. light green, I'm not moving. I'm looking back like, yeah, nigga, you thought it was sweet out here, nigga, now you know. I built this. <laughs> Me, brick hey. by brick. Oh, God. <laughs> That's how you do that. Oh, uh, God. Just, this is just a show of real niggas. Oh, God, and if you see in this video, I warned you. You should have let me in. And I'll never go to your church. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I hope they rob you of your tithes. Oh, God. All right. Is that too far? That Maybe was an amazing story. A little too far, but I like it. I like where, you, I like where your head's at. <laughs> I like where your head's at. We'll take it there. Fuck it. <laughs> it's giving first Sunday. I, I, we are, but like I said, we're here to do a wrap-up show. This is, again, this is Grace. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, her YouTube channel. She is a content creator. She is amazing. She will be here starting off once a month and until She's ready to come on when as much as she wants. It'll just be that. You feel me? Yeah, her her stuff will be underneath, right? That's yes, yes, yes. Everything will be in the New bio. video dropping tomorrow for 21 you feel Savages me? So album. she does. Tell them what you do before we get started. Um, So I do reaction videos as a music connoisseur myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So an album's coming out. I'm just going to listen to it and give my honest, unbiased opinion. And most of the stuff Definitely I react to is biased. pretty good. No. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, I don't really listen to people that I don't like. And But okay. if I listen to it and I don't like it, like Roddy Rich's album, mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. That's tough. It's tough. <laughs> the, the reviews for 21's album, but we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> we don't have to get into that right now. <laughs> Shout out Roddy Rich, man. Um, okay. So, 2023. A year in review, man. So I, I've been asking Ish all year, before we get into all our favorite stuff and whatever, I've been asking Ish all year, like, how do you feel about the state of rap? Where do you think we're headed? Do you think 2023 was a positive year? Because I, I've heard a lot of speculation about rap slowly fading away from being the number one genre and us having to go through that moment that we went through in the mid 2000s where we're looking for a savior but there is none because of one of the best rappers in the world one is in jail the other one is a so-called snitch and the other one maybe <laughs> can't rap no more and this is Lil Baby Gunner and Thug, if you're not, okay, if you're not okay. getting down with what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, how long can we ask Drake to carry the torch? How long can we ask yeah. J. Cole, Kendrick, right. to carry the torch? Kendrick want to drop an album every half decade, so he's not really carrying anything. Yeah. Fuck so wrong with I that. just wonder if we're going to still be in the the mecca, if rap is going to be the mecca, the shit, the yeah. everything everybody wants to be driving the culture for it and of course it's always going to drive the culture but ish was explaining to me that rap is omnipotent if you will yeah. it's everywhere it's everything yeah. it has yeah. trans it has made its mark in every avenue you can think of. You hear rap in Target. You hear rap in the club. Right. You hear rap on the plane. You hear rap in air. Everywhere you go, you hear rap. And if you're not hearing rap, you're hearing the influence of rap. Yep. You're hearing the influence of track music. You're hearing the influence of future, all the Atlanta rappers. You're hearing the influence of Wayne. You're hearing the influence of Drake. So no matter where you go, it's like you can't necessarily escape it. So it may be impossible to go back to right. that phase we were in in the early 2000s Thanks. um early 90s whatever so my question to you grace i'll start with you do you feel like rap from 2023 do you feel like what you heard encourages you from what's to come or is it discouraging um i will say in the compared to like 2020 21 and 2022 last year was definitely the weakest year and I think yeah. the heavy hitters were really heavy, but it was also um, the light was kind of dimmed by the amount of mid that we had. Yeah. And I think rap was just a little oversaturated last year. And I really think it's getting to that point because it's really not hard to be a rapper these days. Like, not super facts. As long as you have a viral Watch song it. on TikTok, um, yeah. you can be a rapper. <laughs> and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But back in the day, people like used to have to perform in front of eight people mm -hmm. before they got in front of the right people to yeah. move their career forward. And it's just really sad because also too many people are trying to, like what we were talking about with Lil Baby, too many people are trying to go in creative directions that they don't really have the capacity to do. 
and yeah. it's just really disappointing <laughs> because <laughs> like just rap mm -hmm. like we do we don't need you to have a song that needs to go viral on social media you should care about putting out quality content for your fans right. and everybody i feel is trying to sound like the next person mm -hmm. there's so many kanye wannabe dupes cardi dupes yeah. thug dupes it's, it's just uh, over it's a bit overwhelming Five. Okay, so I want to respond to that real quick before I get to Ish. It's Drake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drake kind of did something that only Drake should be doing. Yeah. And now everybody wants to do that. So everybody yeah. wants to be able to go to Jamaican music, go to London music, do R&B, Have do their pop. Have song played in Forever 21. And be the yeah. best rapper in the world. Like, yeah. that's, Drake can do that Five. because he is Drake. Nobody else can do that, and it's people that can scratch the surface. Like, I think Thug is a really, really versatile artist. I think he yeah. can scratch the surface, but Thug also stays in his lane. Wherever right. he goes, you still hear the essence of Young Thug. Yeah. I think the artist, like Little Baby, they're losing the essence of what he is trying to get these records to blow on TikTok. And I want to take Travis Scott for an example. Mm -hmm. Travis Scott has stuck to a formula. The formula has worked, and he has not missed with the formula. And Travis Scott is arguably the biggest rapper in the world right now outside of the big three I just named earlier. Right. Yeah. So when you're looking at that, I just feel like it would be a blueprint for artists to say, if I ha I'm good at something, why not stick to it? Because right. I do agree with you. I think people are trying to get into what other what the big rappers are doing and a mm -hmm. part of what made rap so <clears throat> great and so, um, so cool was everybody was so different. Like, yeah. 3K had his own thing. Wayne had his own thing. T.I. had his own thing. Yeah. Gigi had his own thing. Hope Future. had his own thing. Kanye. Yep. Everybody had their own thing, their own sound, their own way. And, of course, you heard the influence of rappers in rappers. That's always going to... That's always going to be a thing. You see the influence of football players and football players, basketball yeah. players and basketball That's all Influence is always going to be a thing. But there is um, a difference between somebody influencing you and you copying somebody and right. trying to be like somebody. And I think that's a very important point is people are losing the originality that used to come with this. And they're trying to have something that blow because the money is more important than actually being an artist. Right. I um, agree. So, yes, ish. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And me and Dale have been discussing music for like a decade almost at this point. But <laughs> to harken back to one of our more heated arguments back in the day, <laughs> when Ski dropped, I said, I don't like where we going right now. I said, I don't <laughs> like what's out here right now. I, I like said, ski mask. No, no, I said, hey, listen, I like, I like, you know, no, 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 He's the song. Ski Gunna and Thug. The, oh, the I song. thought you meant, I do have my ski no, mask. No, no, I listen to ski, ski mask pretty straight. I like ski mask. But I was listening to the song, I was like, man, I don't like where we going right <laughs> now. <laughs> I said, I don't like the turn that niggas just took. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the, the Cartoon Network cut music mm. for this TikTok clip. And niggas was like, man, you hate everything, bro. Just have some fun. I said, all right, listen, when TikTok get a hold of these niggas, man, it'll never be the same. And you're starting to see it, and not just with rappers, where I really noticed it was <laughs> whatever that AI Wait, TikTok is Wait, is on so much fun? That's on so much fun, No, right? it's, it's on not, the... Uh, oh, it's on Slime Language. language. Yeah. Never mind. I think that song would have been better maybe on... It would have. So it would have been better. Because it would have fit the surf. theme of the album. Mm. Definitely. I think it was like a surf, like, yeah. dupe. But shorty, like the AI, like you know the AI TikTokers, that was like, that oh my shit, god, thank that you. That shit scares me, bro. She she dropping singles. I'm like, like, why is she rapping? <laughs> like, how did you go from AI chatbot to rap? I saw a video. They made Justin Bieber was singing an Adele song. Oh yeah. I said, oh my god, we're bro. Lost. I'm <laughs> where lost. are we going? Like, attention is currency now, as opposed yeah. to art being. Yeah, you and see even, it oh, with like the oh no you get you you see it with like the fake outrage like social media marketing or whatever you can do to get in front of ma massive amounts of people whether they hate you or not whether they think you weird or not it's clout it's clout and that's currency now so you see these young artists it's like man why would I make a fifteen song album out of my own pocket pay all these producers. And be like, oh, this is a hard album. When I could make five songs and put them all on TikTok. Exactly. And, and until until they hit. Exactly. And that's what you're kind of seeing. I, and I think that goes back to a point I kind of said was that 
people don't love this shit no more. Like, people yeah. don't love to rap no more. Yeah, I no, can no. tell, even in... I know the conversation around Drake is maybe that he's gotten kind of lazy with his music, but even in that take, I can still tell that Drake loves to rap. Yeah. I can still hear it. I can still hear that Lil Wayne love to make music. Despite how you feel about it, yeah. I still feel the love is there. Yeah. I still feel, every time I hear a J. Cole verse, it looked like, I give a fuck about this shit. Like, yeah. I hear that with Yachty's new music, to bring a younger rapper in this. I heard that with Gunna's last album. Shout out Caribou. So, I, I hear it. But it's few and far in between, and that's yeah. the issue. You, yeah. you used to hear it all the time, but you had a point. You, you um, point. Well, two things. One, I think more people should take the Tyler, the creator approach, because I don't know if you guys saw his Rap Radar interview, but he was like, mm -hmm. I got really tired of people taking me as a joke. Like, yeah. people think I can't rap because mm -hmm. I like to have fun. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to show them that I could really rap. Mm -hmm. And Yachty's doing the same thing now, and you could tell. And he was like, I'm tired of being the butt of the joke when mm -hmm. it comes to rapping because I yeah. can actually rap. Mm -hmm. um, and then also what you were saying about uh, people just don't care anymore. It's mm. even like that, though, for content creating because the market's so oversaturated. Of and course. now it's harder for people who actually really want to do it outside of the clout aspect or the money aspect because yeah. it's just so many people trying to do it that now how my video got blocked on YouTube, you have to filter through so much stuff to make sure that your platform can stay afloat. Mm -hmm. And it's just like some people, you don't have the personality Right. For that. And yeah. you can tell in people's TikToks and their get ready with me. It's mm -hmm. like you're literally just doing this so you can get yeah. a little famous. So just to just to veer off on that real quick, because we're going to talk a lot of music today. That's a perfect point, because I'd be on Instagram and it'd be regular girls like get ready with me this weekend. I'm like, well, Why? Like, where, where are, are you going? going? <laughs> yeah, like, what, are you, what are we doing? Yeah, like, just put the picture up. Like, I don't, I don't want to see you go through outfits. Like, mm, I like And this you're one. taking your personality from other people that you see on yeah. the internet. Because you don't act like that in real life. And it's so cringy. Lit, like, people that don't speak in real life. Like, that would, that are, don't, that would not talk. I agree. Y'all used to be on Tumblr. Seen and not heard. <laughs> but now everybody wants to. You got to bring back shame. bullying, Be an bro. influencer in shame. We need yeah. to bring back bullying in shame. It's, bully, it's the money that it looks like it makes. And yeah. yeah. I believe social media is very deceptional. and Because people don't post the bad stuff. There you go. Facts. It, that doesn't happen. So yeah. you see the good that comes from the content creation. You don't see how hard it is. You don't see the long nights. You don't yeah. see how hard editing it is, how bad your eyes listen, are. When that, listen, when that computer saying? crashed that second time. <laughs> but you guys, I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> It's something you just, you can't, you don't understand. And it's the same thing with rap. People just yeah. think it's easy and I yeah. can get by making some words rhyme every now and then because I get high and I freestyle with my friends. But no, like to be a good rapper, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes hours and hours of repetition because yes, you can be good, but are you willing to put in the work? And that's what it looks like everybody is missing is everybody is skipping the work and the work is the most important step. And that's where I look, that's where I'm starting to, how I'm starting to feel. And that kind of brought me to the point I wanted to make when you brought up Tyler, the creator. Tyler was, what Tyler did was so important because he took his time with each phase of his new sound. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a full year in between each Tyler album. And yeah. Tyler had a studio schedule. Like, we have a 40-hour work week. He had a 70-hour work week studio session. I mean, he was going to be in the studio 10 hours a week, six days a week. And when you are creating like that and you're going in with the intention of working towards this sound, and I want to perfect this sound, not just make this sound so it can blow and I can make some money off of it. I want to perfect this sound. You get the result Tyler gets. I think a lot of these rappers, a lot of these artists are going in and trying to half-ass a sound to make some shit blow, which is kind of reiterating the point, but I think that's another aspect of it. Well, yeah. I think a perfect comparison is, like, I, forget, I was on the game arguing with this nigga about rappers, but I was, I was explaining to him the difference, because this is, we, we need to trademark this. Mm. It's the difference between being able to rap and knowing how to make music. Yeah. And I was telling Very this nigga, much so. bro, I can go upstairs right now, cook the shit out of an egg. Mm -hmm. I am not a chef. Yeah. You can go <laughs> and yeah. rap for yeah. all your friends. It is not the same as making great music, and yeah. that's the problem with so many yeah. niggas. The process of making music is so much harder, so much intricate, and it is a skill. Yeah. So if you're only in there, oh, yeah, yo, meet up. We're going to go to the studio. This mm -hmm. day is bottles, bitches everywhere. We're just going to record. <laughs> All right, that shit gonna be ass. Like, yeah. Kanye literally shipped himself to Wyoming. Dog. 
to bought work a, on bought music. A, bought, a, bought a whole little state. Like, he went to an <laughs> island, yeah. isolated himself from everybody, and gave us My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Like, Five. people aren't doing yeah. that these days. What's up with this? Nigga lived in the bottom of Mercedes Benz for no reason. It's a million <laughs> hotels no in Atlanta. Reason. This nigga lived in the middle Just of a soccer stadium. Could. Yeah. There's a hotel that connects to the stadium. <laughs> He could have took a truck. He could have walked. He could have got a bus. He could have got a shuttle. They could have got a little cart. He could have got a helicopter. You know a little cart. He, he could have got, got, had like a Segway or something. <laughs> he could have fucking anything. Yo, they could have opened the anything. dome. They could have opened the dome. He flew out the helicopter and landed on the other hotel. <laughs> Bruh, like, and you living in the basement, you fucking psycho. <laughs> they say, yo, he paying a million a day to live in the basement. <laughs> That's Why? wild. A hotel room is six hundred dollars. Yeah, like. and some of them might be a little cheaper for you because you're Kanye. Right. <laughs> what hotel's gonna charge? Well, never mind. Those people would probably let him it. stay there for free. I don't know. I charge. I think. I would too. <laughs> Ain't no teller was going on in that room. I need a credit card on file. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no teller was going on in that room. Shout Man. out, yeah. Shout Incidentals, out to sign here, please. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> sign here, please. <laughs> Okay, so any, we, any any hotel room for five or four for to walk into, I need a little credit card in print. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let y'all leave when I have a little. <laughs> All right, let's get into the. We'll start off with just light and easy. Who is? What are some of your favorite uh, features from this year? I I, I do believe yeah. that we still do get great features a lot throughout the year. Mm-hmm. The so features I, have been better than the I, projects. Yes. And I singles. Do, I have a lot of features I liked a lot. So, Grace, we'll start with you. Who are your, where were your top five features? Uh, my features. Are seven, eight, nine, 15. So I have, this might be a hot take, 21 Savage on Want Me Dead. Mm. I really, really, really like that song. That's crazy. I have a 21 that's Savage good. verse. I that's love that pick. song. <laughs> that's a good pick. Um, I really liked um, Lotto on Freaky T, the mm. remix. Yes. Oh, um, this is pretty. very woman heavy because kind of last be. year yeah, it was. That's why you're here. Mm. Yeah, I promise. Um, Cardi <laughs> B <laughs> on Jealousy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Shout out Cardi she B. She walked on that. Mm-hmm. I uh, don't. Problems. You know how I feel about Nikki, but her verse on Pound Town Two was really good. Come on now. Oh yeah. And Come on now. I don't know it's who's. It's a barb in here. Be careful. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, um. Oh nine. oh nine till infinity. Young money on top. Pussies. <laughs> Dale in love with a barb. He been, he been um, down. For it. Listen, Dale been so gone for so many years. Like. You like Pink Friday too? Yes. Hmm. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we will. Um, I don't know who the feature on this is, but this song is hard. Central C and Dave Sprinter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I like the the muffin okay. man rap. I fuck with it. So I'm I'm gonna go off top since we're using my phone to record, but I do remember the <laughs> list a little bit because I was just looking at it. So first, my favorite feature was a song I had to rip off Twitter and like up the quality on it, and it was that Lil Word. Wayne "Ready or Not" verse. <laughs> Shout out Lil oh, Wayne. Yeah. That shit was so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the clip. <laughs> I was like, that has to be new. I have, like, <laughs> that is not some shit he's done before. <laughs> That has, is this AI? Yo, <laughs> this AI? yo, I was looking around like, man, I got a lot of Wayne. Ain't no way I ain't seen that one before. But I got that one. One second, I got twenty one on peaches and eggplants. I done heard that song Ooh. everywhere. I love that song. Honestly, I was having trouble trying to remember what came out this yeah. year and last year because everything is still so. Yeah, because I think that came out early. Yeah, I'm gonna go that, that third. Was good. I have a uh, 350 off DJ Drama album. I think his name is Lulu or L U L E. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy chorus. Mm-hmm. He cooked the chorus and just got off. I love that. Ooh. DJ, shout out DJ Drama. Shout out Drama. Fourth, I got Kitchen Lights, Stove God Cooks. That's um, a great pick. Fifth, I'm blanking on the fifth song right now. We'll come back. We'll come back. He All right, my top five, my number one of the year. I when I do these, I take into consideration the impact of the song, the moment of the song, all of those things. So my number one feature of the year was Cole on First Person Shooter. Mm. Um, I think he took over that song, dominated that song, and that third flow I want to say he got in yeah. makes me sick to my stomach. That was an honorable <laughs> mention. That was an honorable mention yeah, for me. Man. Lil Wayne on Uneasy with John Batiste. I don't, most people haven't heard that feature, but y'all know the bar where he said, um, I've been about it bad because I always wanted to be a G. That's the <laughs> verse he sat that on. But that verse always, Fire. it only gets crazier from there. It's, just, <laughs> it's an amazing, it's an amazing That's a crazy verse. crazy thing to say. Been and, about a bag. And, and he was rapping over him playing the guitar, so extra points for that. 
Um, yeah. Then I have Benny on Oprah and Gail on mm. off of Collie Grove mm. too. That mm. is one of my favorite things mm. I've heard. Benny, like Benny, yeah. is only getting better, and that's scary. Mm. Benny is only no, getting better. Because the other thing is we eat it right now. I'm very excited for his album coming out January 26. Fourth was He's dropping again. Mm-hmm. Fu- mm-hmm. Future and Sissa yep. together on Telekinesis off of Utopia. I fuck with that. Amazing, amazing, yep. amazing artistry. One. That's how you put together a song. Shout out to Travis. That's a perfect okay. song. And last, I just feel like if you're going to come out the closet, I'm going to pause. <laughs> but if you're going to come out the closet, get off the street, get off the flute, pause again. Um, all right. I'm going to start over, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> all of that was crazy. <laughs> Three pauses. Nigga, call 50,000 gay. <laughs> my, my fifth feature is Andre 3000 on Scientists and Engineers. I'm sorry. That was crazy to say. That's a crazy way to introduce. Yo, that's on me. 100%. Did y'all yeah, listen right. to his that's album? No. I did. I got, no, I, got, I, got, I, got, I did. I got shit to do. No, no, I listened to it when I was at work. I didn't, I, I wasn't like paying attention to the songs. Mm-hmm. But the 40 minutes will buy kind of fit. <laughs> yeah, China told me it's good to fall asleep, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. I, I do remember my fifth song, ironically, it's also off Utopia, okay. but it's Drake's Meltdown verse. I understand. Oh, I it's forgot Drake's about Meltdown that one. Verse. That's a good one. That's a good Y'all one. know I love a good beef. Y'all know I love a good beef. Yeah, no, he yeah. walked on that yeah. beef. Yeah. Honestly, all the features really, on though. Utopia really, kind of carried. Even Kid bro, Cudi. I love it, bro. Even I Kid Cudi snapped. I love it. Those features are great. Oh, the James Blake. Last song. I love that feature. Mm. It's a great feature. Yeah. All right. That brings me to what are y'all some of y'all favorite rap verses from the year? I it was a lot of good verses. This is kind of a hard thing to narrow down. I said yes. pick three. I don't really care how oh, many. Oh, you said you three. Name. Damn, yeah. I only came I, uh, up with one. If but you I can only think have of three, one, that's I can okay. think of three right now. Though. It's I can okay. Think of three. I will start with mine uh, just in case y'all pulling up. So my number one is another feature. And I didn't say it on a feature because it's damn near its own song in itself because it's such a long feature. And that's Cole on the recipe. Okay. That shit yeah. is Yeah, that was, that was an honorable mention for my um, features feature. of the year. Yeah. I don't think y'all understand how hard it is to do what he did on that song where he kept that same rhyme pattern for two minutes. Yeah. That is disgusting. Mm-hmm. And bonus points for the Amelie bar because it's been there since 2008 and nobody has thought to say that. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. such a simple but witty bar. I enjoyed that a lot. Number two was the, I want to say the third verse on If the Shoe Fits off of the Scary Hours 3. The it, might be the, it might be the second or third verse. It's one of the verses Which, on which one is it? I can tell you. Um, I that shit. The one where I think it should be every verse. You, it really should be every verse, <laughs> but my favorite one where he was in the like uh, click the link tree and find you sucking dick on cam. I think that's oh, the second yeah, verse. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> Not Miss Independent. That, that's my They dog. ain't got a man. That's my dog. <laughs> and I have to give some recognition to this song at some point in the show. So the third honorable mention was Meg's first verse on Cobra. That mm. shit, it might be the same. It's one of the birth of them. The whole song, it don't matter. Meg on Cobra yeah. was elite 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 that music song maker. that song the video I love the rollout, that song. Yeah. everything about it the guitar the beat everything about the song is amazing shout out to me because when i first heard it i was like oh, okay mm-hmm. okay and then i was listening to the lyrics i was like oh mm-hmm. okay sad girl anthem cool but it's still fun yeah. and then like just the flow she was yes. using because she's kind of been selling lately mm-hmm. i won't lie like she's just been giving really like eh performances mm-hmm. so she's as a fan mad. like she's been rappers have a bag they go to and yeah, she's just going to that yeah. bag that yeah, and it's just like her last couple projects haven't been the best mm-hmm. but I really really like this song and I don't think her this new era because she's also funding this era by herself like she's yes yeah she's independent, independent now yes um, salute, salute. I think she just Big needed ups. to address everything she needed to address, and then she now did. we can get past that and really start right. cooking right yeah. and that makes me so happy and then the concept with the <laughs> No, no, ten out of ten for sure. Shout for out, sure. Meg. She had a. She just dropped a song with Renee Rapp. That's fire for yeah, the Mean Girls out, movie. Mean Girls? Not yet. Okay. I need to. It's a musical. I heard right. Yeah. 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 Fuck the musical. I Fuck love musical. musicals. Yeah. I'm, go, I'm gonna go see it. It's crazy. Time. You never meet no, somebody that's like, oh yeah, I kind of like musicals. <laughs> Either niggas hate <laughs> musicals. Or At work yesterday, like, I was <laughs> telling them about how like Glee is getting really intense right now because I'd stop watching it in season three, but yeah. Nelson was like, no, we gotta finish. We gotta finish. <laughs> so we're on season four. Some of the best television I've ever seen. <laughs> And yeah, I was it's, like, my coworkers like, I hate Glee, I hate musicals. Is Glee, <laughs> an entire show of musicals. Yeah, yeah. Every episode is like that's 
But they do at least four or five songs. Fucking crazy choreography. Like when you see some of that stuff, we'll have you like. Let me let, now. Let me throw another curveball at you. Now imagine the show being serious as fuck too. Like the show is like the drama rocking. those kids like, were going through. Yeah. Like this girl got pregnant and then she was already dating this guy, but she cheated on him. Yeah. And she's in the chastity club and it's, 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 she it's convinces shit. her boyfriend. She gets pregnant. She convinces her boyfriend that they got she got pregnant because his sperm was in the hot tub. Whole time she's carrying this other dude's baby. They're in high school, tenth grade at least. Yeah. High school musical influences everywhere. No, nah, I remember I was in high, I, I I don't know why I was watching this in high school, but we was watching a clip of like the school shooting episode in high yes, school. Yes, that's the episode we just saw last night. Oh, and really? Mike, I was crying because I was so anxious. Bro, I got thrown in the class. We was watching the clip. I was like, what show is this? It was like Glee. I looked back. I said, this shit was on Glee. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't got shit on Grey's Anatomy Hospital. I was looking episode. around. It doesn't. I, I it know. doesn't. You ain't got to tell me. You ain't got to like, tell the, me. The gap isn't super far. <laughs> Because it's just like all the drama that was already yeah. going on on the show, and now it's like the way the gun went off, and like yeah. it's just a lot. I was crying last night. <laughs> I was like, this is, this so is cinema. My top three um, verses. This was a little. So, like our show, we combine sports, music, uh, YouTube, of course, with Grace. We got to combine one more thing for Grace. Okay. It's fine. We'll figure it out. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I be thinking, the way I think about verses, like if I get smacked enough, I think about them like a really good game for a Hooper. So like in my mind, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to put 30 and 15 on this one. Like this, feel me. this was feel an elite me. performance. Mm-hmm. So my first favorite verse of the year, gun on bread and butter. That first verse. Mm. Letting niggas know, no, nah, I'm still here. Right, I'm you. still back. I'm not ducking no beef yeah. either. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get right at you, baby. Don't even trip. I got you right here. That's. First, right there, um, I got it. it uh, listen, I'll be that guy. My next two songs for sure are going to be Drake songs. Uh, <laughs> second, got to be stories about my brother. Understand. Got to be Banger. Banger. Hey, that's Pick one of your favorite verses, too. Pick a verse. That shit is so crazy. Put some holes in your top. You an Air Force man. Listen, that nigga was really rapping. And I the like second one, man. I mean, the last one, 8 a.m. in Charlotte. I'm Real. Real. Bro. I feel like I'm Czechoslovakian. So Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Shout out Conductor, up. man. Shout out Conductor. We ate heavy this year. Grace, I'm going to start calling you G6 on this show. So That's fine. G6. That's kind of hard. That. Oh, I know. I thought of that three weeks ago. Like, That's kind of hard. <laughs> that is hard. I won't lie. That's a time that and effort. That's, that's, that's tough. tough. That's that's tough. <laughs> I can just see him like, damn. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably were you too? Yeah. Oh yeah, he was yeah. medicated. He was for sure medicated. Okay, I think I have my three. I, I just came up with it off the dome. Um, I don't know if this counts as rap, but I will give it to "Luckily I'm Having" by Don Toliver and Tizo Touchdown. Oh yeah, that Tizo, okay. his contribution to the song was amazing. Um, that last verse on "Solo Step in Crete" oh, yeah. by Yachty. Mm, yep. Yes. Sir. I don't know what type of what you he was on. Your daddy grew up better than Adana Ground. <laughs> <laughs> I read a check about the tour I was going to yeah, see. <laughs> and the last one is going to be the last verse on Drew Picasso. Okay. Mm. That's a great pick. I want to give an honor mention to Dirk on Pellicoat, the second verse. Ooh, uh, that's, that's one of my song? favorite songs from last year. That came out in 2023. Yes, that's yeah, because I had his album to me didn't really have that much replay value. Dirk do this thing or he'll drop a whole album and it'd be all right, but it's that one song. That one song and it's that song. Yeah, it's like Because when best I heard that, I was like, I think, back. I think Dirk needs an A&R. Hell I think yeah. Dirk I needs a real A&R that loves him and can speak to him with respect so because baby. Dirk has it. Dirk just, I just don't think Dirk has anybody around him telling him like, yo, shrink this. Like, yeah. stop. Ma- like, he makes playlist albums. And if yeah. you want to do that, that's cool. But I think if Dirk wanted to make a concise 12 song album, it would be out of here. And it would do a, do a number for his career. I agree. Because just because he waited too, is that the one that dropped during COVID? Yes. That yeah. was amazing. It was. It was. Amazing. It was. The deluxe, amazing. Yes. And then. The one he dropped after that, seven two two. It was a playlist. Two, it was a playlist. Yeah, album. It and had then some shit on there. The Don't. deluxe. Why aren't your kids rapping? Yeah, I like when people do that. Sometimes, I, sometimes. I, I enjoy that. Every, yeah, see, that's every, why I know, I, I know I'm a hater. Get I that nigga it. off the mic. I, you sound like Nelson. <laughs> Get that I'm nigga. A, I I like it because I can skip it. 
So okay. it's not like, okay, it's not like I'm on a CD and that's I gotta fair. play this on. No, because when Wayne did it on No Silence Three, yeah, No Silence yeah, Three, yeah. I was like, Young Money, what I tell you? Yeah. My bad. Don't yeah, fuck with the Adonis yeah. verse. Yes. yes. Mom, mom, Don't mom, talk mom, to man. my man like that. That shit is cold. I fuck I with Northwest like verse. I fuck with no, the Northwest verse. I fuck with Northwest verse. I fuck with Northwest verse. I fuck with Northwest verse. Northwest really. really and her, that like, shit. upstage with G Herbo and them. And they yeah. all. Like, nah, she yeah, was you going know crazy. that shit is yeah. hard. I ain't fuck with Adonis. It's your yeah, bestie, industry point. All right, so we did features, did whatever the uh their future their verses what what are y'all some of y'all favorite songs and we can just chit chat what are y'all some some of y'all favorite songs what what made it your favorite song was it the impact um i would just start off and name a few to get us started so i want to give some love to offset Say My Grace. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite songs that came out last Shout year. Shout out Offset. Enjoyed that album a lot, honestly. And Say My Grace is crazy. It was a really good album. I think it was too long. Because the first, like, 15 or 16 songs are really, really good. And then the last five, I was like. We'll get to it because yeah. I completely agree. Hell yeah. And then some other, another one I'll name and let y'all, let y'all go. Uh, Grace. Salute. You know, Disney, Disney musical people. Mm-hmm. Miley Cyrus Flowers. The demo Ooh. version, oh yes, sir. Get like down. y'all, y'all don't get it. Y'all never gonna get it. But I'm telling <laughs> you, this summer when you on the beach, are you at the park or something? Put it on and and have some fun with some some green stuff. And I promise <sighs> you, your life is going. Yeah, you're gonna that, feel me. that was. But Ooh. what y'all? What's some of y'all favorite songs from last year and why? Uh, I'm gonna definitely let me give Greg some time. Uh, I'm gonna definitely go <clears throat> shit anything off these out anything off Ganger. Probably rich no duh, mm-hmm. but man, listen, I ain't gonna lie. It took a little. It, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like when I first started listening to like Kendrick. I was like, man, this nigga boy. V's like, yeah, because V's rap a little offbeat. Like he in the little Detroit oh. pocket. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it yeah, took yeah. me a minute to like really like like all right, just listen to it. Like I really just like, bro, I cannot stand what niggas do this. See, I can't. I'm not that patient. You have to get me pretty quickly. I, if I have to sit there and wait like to get it. Yeah, I had to revisit. No cap, I had to revisit like. It depends. Nine months later. I, it depends. That's why I don't really like yeah. Detroit rap like that. It dep- I'm usually yeah. a guy that can I can understand. And it's not always about me liking understanding, but like, can I understand what you're doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, I can not like a song, but be like, okay, that makes sense. I yeah, understand yeah, why yeah, you yeah, did that. that. Right. These falls, those Detroit rappers, that, that flow, that yeah. sound, it makes sense to me. I understand why it's being done. It's just not necessarily for me. But he told yeah. me to listen to V's album, so I'm going to do like that. Like, I, I don't, I'm I forget. I'm going to give it some time. Know. I did hear the Boats interlude yeah. or something. That's, that shit was hard. I, I literally don't even know when Ganger, like, the album Ganger dropped. Like, because I, I heard it and didn't fuck with it. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't start listening to it, like, till, like, mid-December, mm-hmm. damn near. And then I heard, I heard, he got this song. I tell everybody this. He took the intro music from Law and Order and rapped over Oh, I over saw it. that on TikTok. And that shit yeah, was yeah, crazy. Yeah. I saw that on TikTok. I was like, man, you know, you know, you know yeah. I was like, this nigga a yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, yo, he was really rapping. Um, Ken Carson. Much out, Ken Carson. A great, a great chaos. A bunch of songs off that shit I fuck with. Probably Fighting My Demons, probably my favorite. Yeah, I heard Ken Carson's pretty good. He just is too much of a Cardi dupe for me to. Oh, he's one thousand percent like he's like Cardi before like he like took that van. I right like turn. um, I can't. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'm gonna figure that out while you. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Ken Carson feels like he splits the difference between like Uzi and Cardi. It's like okay. that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I can respect. I that. have to give some love to always. We always do this for the women. We love the women. This is for the women. So, um, Pound Town. Of course, I got to shout out Pound Town. How did we forget? That Bro, was Nikki had went back to back with Pound Town and the Princess Diana yeah, remix. She, went, yeah. she was going crazy. She and then the Barbie 30. song. That was all yeah, the like, no, the Barbie uh, song was fans. tough. She was clicking. <laughs> the oh, yeah. Was tough. Now listen, on that same note, shout out Sexy Red. Listen. Shout out Sexy Red. Salute. Listen. It was a Sexy Red year. It was. For it was show. a Sexy Red um, year. Shout out Ski. Oh, From a Man by Young Thug. The single he dropped with uh, Mariah, Mariah the Scientist. Very, very good song. The pocket he get into on that second verse is disgusting. I think Thug, <laughs> I think Thug is a very, 
unique artist in that people don't fully grasp the talent that he possesses and how effortlessly he is able to get into pockets and get out of pockets and get in rhyme schemes just and say words together that people just literally can't do. Yeah. And I Because you wouldn't think of to do something I, like you that. You just wouldn't. Most humans just aren't gonna think to do something like that. I love Thug. I think the Free my him. favorite quote of from Young Thug was they was asking him hey like when you was around Kanye and doing the remote control verse, like, what did he teach you? And he was like, bro, can't nobody teach me nothing about music. <laughs> like, I do this. Like, this, I have mastered this, bro. Fox. And I hear that. And I hear that arrogance. I hear the cockiness when yeah. he raps in. Salute, Young Thug. Another one would be um, self-love off of uh, the the – Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse album with Metro. That's oh the spoiler. I still need to hear that. You haven't heard that album? No. Oh, it's so good. The it's only so reason I didn't is because I wanted to do a reaction for it for my channel, but Nelson was like, I don't know about that. It's like an album for kids. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about that, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess they can't really. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, like Spidey do this, Spidey yeah. do that. So it's on my list. I'm going to get to it. You I have a playlist of stuff should. that I need to, that I save that I haven't listened yet that I need to listen to. Okay. So that's definitely on there. You've seen the movie though, right? Yeah, it's oh, on twice. Okay, okay. Yeah, I did too. That's one of the best movies I've ever <laughs> I mean, seen. I go see it again. Life. I go see that. I watch that movie right now. I can put it on Netflix. We can stop all this oh, shit and just watch oh, the movie. God. I bought that shit on Amazon Prime. That shit for a job. I fucking love that yeah. movie. I would also like to throw in uh, Lil Uzi Vert on Fire Alarm. And I gotta. If, okay. I got us crazy. Now, listen. No, disclaimer. Uzi, disclaimer. Yeah. If you don't listen to the verse on Fire Alarm, skip like 30 seconds because I know y'all don't be fucking with that shit. <laughs> 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 he do start rapping though, I promise. Yeah. Uh, I think some of my favorite songs last year. For one, I will give a shout out to Sexy Red again. Ghetto Princess with Chief Keef was so fire. Really I don't know if you guys heard that. Oh, yeah. Um, we need more Chief Keef mentions. Chief Keef walked Keith. on that beat. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm really excited for the Lyrical Lemonade album because he's on two songs on there, I think. Mm. Or it might be just be one, but it's him and Yachty on the song. So mm. I'm looking forward to that. You Broke My Heart. Honestly, this is these are all tied not really. These two are tied. Um, you broke my heart, Drew Picasso, and what would Pluto do? Honestly, mm -hmm. those are yeah really good songs. Now that I've deleted the songs I don't like for all, from for all the dogs, it's such a good album. I listen. I'm telling you, bro. Like that is like one of my favorite things about being a Drake fan. Like, I'm telling you. <laughs> like I deleted yeah. those four, three, four songs, and I was like, oh, this Fam, is amazing. Listen, if you trimmed them Drake albums down. Boy, you'd be masterpiece. Like, you'd be like, what? Nigga, you I was know? listening to my my version of Scorpion the other day. My nine. My version, version of Scorpion is. Great. I need to do that. Version. I'm just like so. I love Drake so much that like it really would hurt me to have to trim that album down. But like I know I have to because yeah. it's not good as a whole. I trimmed that shit down. I was like, man, this nigga on a three crazy three song <laughs> run right now. <laughs> I was listening to it like I'd never heard it before. I was like, yo, this nigga going crazy. <laughs> I also want to throw in Running Late by Caribou. I won't comment. That was further, good. That was good. <laughs> My song of the wait, did we get in the song of the year, or is this kind of like the same thing? No, oh no, gotta, this is no, this is. No, 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 no. If you ha yes, we can do the song of the year. Go there. Yeah, oh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. My song of the year is "Strike Holster" by yeah. Yachty. That's like a that good pick. I was, sorry, I was like, about to shout out that song. And yeah, I really like don't want to be that person, but like the minute I heard that snippet and then he actually dropped it, and I that that's why I love Yachty for doing that more. Artists from the era that he came from should do that more. That and I don't know if you guys yeah. watch Dave, but Lil Dicky's dropping all the Come songs on. from Dave this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Swear to God. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Man, I love mm -hmm. Even the song with Gata at the end of mm -hmm. season two. Oh, that like, song is out already. It is? It's on Spotify, yes. Oh, my God. You know, God. We know him. Yes. That's T's friend. Yes. T who? Uh, Your friend T. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he knows you, though. Mm -hmm. But. I, I, <laughs> I, um, you got 10,000 Instagram followers, dude. Um, <laughs> everybody <laughs> loves Grace. Like, like, everybody loves Grace. Like, like, why don't they follow me? Y'all <laughs> right. be having friends that I be wanting to follow, and I'm like, what if they think I'm weird? So, yeah. <laughs> leave it be. But my song of the year is Fuck You Mean. That's and real. Pound Town. Those are my two. Those are my mm. two. I had to, I wanted to throw male and female because women are like really like. 
more consistent than men at this point. So I, yeah. I felt like I needed to do the both. And I think Pound Town, I heard Pound Town so much. And I think if you, when you do Song of the Year, the reaction to the song matters. Like, I like a lot of songs. I think yeah. it may be a few songs that are better than these songs, but yeah. the impact and of the song matters and the replay value of the song matters and the versatility of the song. Like, yeah. I heard Pound Town at cookouts. I heard Pound Town in the club. I I've heard, heard emo Town versions of Pound Town. Yes. So it's just, I hear it. I can hear that anywhere. I heard it in people's cars. And the same thing with fuck you mean just as versatile, just as impactful. And I, I really got a I really got a real respect for Gunna last year because he could have shut down. He could have he could have took two years off and just let the scene yeah. die down, let the noise die down, and he Facts. said, Hell no. Nah. Yeah. And got to work and didn't miss on nothing. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> said, Even the songs it, I didn't like myself. the first time I listened. I was listening to him the other day. I was like, no, nah, these shit's kinda fly. Yes. Yeah, I yes. also want to give an honorable mention to um Flo Millie for Never Wanna Lose Me. Mm, Every version I of that. I am a that member shit. of the Flow Militia, so Flo that's Flo what they're Militia? called. Yeah. That's I'm what gonna that's get a name. shirt. Yeah. What about uh, what about you? So I'm gonna go kind of like yours. Mm. I was. It's gonna sound crazy. I went outside a little more than I usually do. So mm. I, I really wanted to make sure the songs that I was hearing mm. when I was outside. And I'm gonna go peaches and eggplants and ski. Yeah. I like heard that. those everywhere, and ski, everybody yeah. enjoyed those. Yes. Yeah. Like. I was watching the, watching the NFL. Niggas was on the sidelines yelling skis. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, she it was, was at the Jets game yeah, with right. the coach. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? So I, I think, like, especially when you do song of the year or song of the summer, or, like, you should – I should be able to look back and remember, oh, yeah, that's why it wasn't the, talk, it wasn't the yeah. song of the year. It wasn't the song I liked the most because, I mean, mm. everybody not going to like what I like. But, like, the song of the year, like, if I had to pick one, like, what would, what was everywhere 2023? It felt like those two were, like – It was definitely yeah. um, Ski, Pound Town, yep. Looking for the Hose, Strike. Yeah. They were even playing Strike in the club. Like, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> no, they People crazy. play Fuck You Mean in the club, too. I mean, like, I people try to cap on Gunna, but, like – No, Gunna gets played everywhere. I was yeah. out. I was out a lot this year. Yeah. Gunna gets played everywhere um solo creep stepping is better than strike though in my opinion i i think that's one of the best things jody's ever done in life i, I, I don't think the gap is far between the two uh, i think they're I like 1a 1b i can i can agree that's a fact and i Tesla. would like to throw like an honorable fuck i just forgot the song wait i just forgot the song Damn. all right another you and know, oh oh i don't give a fuck drake and eat okay okay yep i uh i, I don't like that song. Y'all don't like that song <laughs> no i don't i don't do that <laughs> i think he is an abomination to music yo i ain't gonna like I was. I think uh, the song is funny. You I have that really, money for fun. And Grace I said that, that about Yeet. That was Grace. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I will. St- I will stand ten toes on. I, I, are you with people? Look at your camera. Say it. I will stand <laughs> ten toes. You. Actually, let me use this hand because I broke a nail on that hand. You know how people like to get <laughs> money in the comments. Um, Yeet sucks. I'm sorry. He has songs that are like good with Thug and Gunna. Yeah. Any song that I've heard that I think is listenable by Yeet. Has a feature by somebody I like. Say hi no. to TikTok. I like I, uh, <laughs> And it pisses me off. So when that was tied with first person shooter to be the next number one from Drake, I'm like, are y'all fucking serious? Listen, and I'm never this guy. I'm about to. I'm never this guy. <laughs> <I'm about to. laughs> but it's really fun. <laughs> it's really fun. I'm never this guy. But I was, was just talking about ski. Couldn't be fun because it's TikTok. Now it's okay. <laughs> huh? I, I was listening to. Contradiction. <laughs> I was listening to the gym. I was like, you don't give no fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at my blood. I, I really think you got to hear it to the right moment. I was at the gym, you know, had the mm-hmm. energy going. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing him text. in two weeks. I, I ain't got a text. I, I got a text. I ain't like, oh, I'm like, I say what I want. Like, <laughs> like bitch, you ain't going on. Like, <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> my problem with Ye is that, like, he just sounds like all these other, like, underground rappers. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, it, your music doesn't sound like it's professionally made. Like, it sounds like somebody made that, those oh, yeah. beats on GarageBand. Oh, and you yeah. just said, here you go. Yeah. Okay. Don't listen. I'll listen to Ye outside of that. Okay. <laughs> and see, I'm scared to listen to that song again outside of my initial reaction because I don't want Siri when I ask her to play something I like. Don't start playing Ye for me, bitch, because you really piss me off. That's funny. It'd be Ye and NBA YoungBoy every time. But no, leave me alone. And, right. and that meme is fucking hilarious. No, it is. <laughs> they had Drake looking like Juan D. Simo, oh, yeah, yeah. and he was like, "I kind of that money for fun." <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't beat the Rich Flex memes though. <laughs> 
<laughs> the rich flex memes clear. Yeah, the rich me- yeah, yeah, rich flex yeah. memes are a great thing that came from. But since you don't like great, since we hating right now, let's get to the hate. What was y'all's biggest disappointments from the year for me, sorry ass niggas? What what made you mad? What pushed you off? It doesn't necessarily have to be a oh, specific yeah. person. Lock in. Let me it can just be stuff. something that happened. It hating. can be something you didn't get. Yeah, I love it. Um, and to give an example, oh, I will first. go first. This isn't a hate. This is just I love you so much. I'm mad at you, Tyler. It's been two years, bro. What you doing? Like, where's the? I album, think he's my about nigga? to. I think he's about to drop. Okay. Yeah, you no, see, he's he, headlining Coachella, so like I think he he's about to drop. Like, he was like, yeah, I dropped a little. Man, the that's love. not enough. A two year long love. Yeah, come fuck out come of here. on, dog. <laughs> nigga, I know who you. Bro. Oh, another side, me, nigga. While we're hating on Tyler, which we never do, I love it. <laughs> I saw him headline Coachella. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. I was like, <laughs> we're twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Bro, I saw I saw Tyler was headlining at Coachella. I was on the phone. I was like, it's kind of stupid. Like, you got a festival. Like, why are you being greedy? Like, you got a festival in California. You have one. You've been headlining your own festival for like seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, him. No, now that it, let's why are you unpack so that. Yeah, why are you so greedy? Let's unpack that because I thought. I That's was really debating on going to Coachella this year because yeah. I was like, I don't want to buy it and they sell on the lineup because the only time you can get the payment plan is if you buy it in the early sale during the mm-hmm. summer. Yeah. And then the tickets, I think, go on sale Friday right. mm-hmm. for the, for like actual, like you just got to drop right. that 600 right then and there. Um, Fuck that. My fault. <laughs> and I saw the lineup. I was thinking, personally, I thought they were going to have SZA because yeah. SZA was at every festival. I thought they were going to have Paramore. Yeah. Paramore was at every festival. Paramore was crazy. I thought they were going to pull something out the hat and get Taylor Swift or Drake. Yeah. And they didn't. And they got Tyler. It, the you got li- Lana Del Rey. Yeah, the lineup is definitely like, okay, I don't, I don't want to take no shots at Lana Del Rey because I love Lana Del Rey. I used to but love Lana Del Rey. the combination of the artists, I'm like, man, it's going to smell crazy in there. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, on God. It, why is – and I think that, like – I was literally thinking about making a TikTok about this the other day because I'm looking at all the festival lineups. Like, even the Bonnaroo lineup is mid. It's like yeah. you guys are re- starting to recycle artists because there aren't people that are good enough, I feel like, or, like, y'all can't get these people. It's okay to take a couple years off. Like, you nice. don't have to do it every year. If you're, I saw Doja Cat when I went to Coachella two years ago. Why yeah. is she headlining? Oh, yeah. Shout out Doja Cat. Um, well, kind of shout out. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Let's Let's clip yeah, that let's one not out. do that. <laughs> that Honestly, out. though, for another song of the year last year, I will give Agora, Agora Hills. Hills. Yeah, yeah I, I just didn't want to give her a shout out. No and cap. Paint the Town Red. Those were two really good yeah. songs. She scares me, but um. So yeah. Oh, oh, we were hating. We was hating on Tyler. <laughs> oh, to the bank will also be one of what yeah. Thug. I mean, what Wayne on off the six for the six for the six. That was crazy beat insane. Oh, yeah. yeah, but hey, come on. Who else were we hating? All right, so we hated on Tyler. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. no, no, you go. You okay. go. I already said mine. I let the Tyler one. So you thought we would forget about you. Um, who can I hate on? Roddy, I didn't forget. Oh, I hate on him enough. I <laughs> I hate on. I wake up to hate on. Roddy I Rich. forgot. <laughs> I forgot Roddy Rich top opposite. <laughs> that little EP he dropped didn't listen to it because I'm not gonna give you the chance to piss me off. Again. Roddy Rich is top opposite in the building. <laughs> Yeah, I have a reaction to that poor excuse of an album on my um, <laughs> channel already. No, oh definitely don't shout out Roddy Rich. <laughs> We're not shouting him out right now. I, I'm acknowledge you. This kind of you're gonna be mad at my disappointments of the year, and I I really hope that doesn't affect our relationship. <laughs> Cause um, did not like the Wayne Project. What Wayne Project? The Fix Before the Six. Oh, I don't care. Oh yeah, no. Did you listen to Collie Girls? Yeah. You should listen to Kanye. No, it was, was good. Yeah. That was way, way oh, better. Six, I don't care. Twi- that song so, with 21? Fucking crazy. crazy. So this is the thing about Wayne, Drake, um, anybody that's done it, that's done and you are top 10, top 15 that has their spot, I don't care what you're doing if I understand what you're doing. So I had I have this rant on our TikTok about how mad I am at Drake about For All the Dogs. Yeah, I saw And it's that. because of the the... The lie, the rollout, the yeah. lying about it. Like, yeah. you're acting like you finna go back to this thing that we know. And I know that you know what it is because you have said in interviews what your best albums are, what your best songs are. And it lets me know you hear and understand yeah. the critiques. I can understand a person like Wayne not saying some shit like that and it not being true because Wayne has proven since he's been around, he don't be knowing shit. Yeah. So, but <laughs> Drake is high. very aware, cerebral of what is going on, what is being yeah. said. So don't lie. And my thing is, Wayne didn't. Wayne didn't say this was gonna be a great album. Wayne said yeah. this is some songs 
off the album that not making the album. That lets me know this is going to be some bad songs, and it's going to be three or four songs where he's <laughs> rapping his ass off. Right. And that's yeah. exactly what it is. That's fair. It's yeah, two yeah, or three. Yeah, Slip, yeah, yeah. he's rapping his ass off to the bank. He's rapping his ass off. He has the rock song with Tuxedo. Like, it's every yeah. aspect of Wayne that you're going to get. And I think it just it's just a cool. bit overkill sometimes with the auto tune. It sounds like sometimes like Drake does this too, mm-hmm. but I think Drake executes it better because he's just perfected the science of making like a true hit. Yes. Yeah. Like at the oh, end great. of the day, it doesn't have to be lyrically powerful. Mm-hmm. Like pop star, for example, mm-hmm. is not very lyrical, mm-hmm. but like that shit come on you. Mm-hmm. Just call him yeah. live. Let, that's a good segue. Like. Cause we didn't talk about this. Um, Cause this is, a, this is just our first time recording. Mm-hmm. But Wayne sounds like he's really trying hard to like, keep up with the new yeah. where rap is I, going and I if he were to drop an album that sounded like the Carter 2 people would eat that shit up yeah I yeah. I agree with that I think that and hold your point my bad but yeah. I no no I was talking about that I point. think he yeah. I think he was doing that way more three years ago I mm-hmm. think he has slowed down on the amount every project every time i hear him yes. on a feature i it was really really apparent in 20 like 2017 to like really like 2016 to like 2019 ish he was really really yeah. trying to catch the new wave new sound Trust my and kids. i can tell that he's not outside because it's just a little like off. Off. Yeah. yeah. Like I could tell he's not outside because I'm not doubting that he can do it. It's just that like you really gotta what I was saying earlier, dive into that shit. Yeah. Right. And I think I think I would I would agree, but I do believe that he is getting away from that. I do think the auto tune is getting better, but I bet I can tell you what year a song what what song you're talking about, I can tell you what year that song was probably recorded because yeah. his auto tune has gradually gotten less and yeah, less eerie yeah, to is, the ear. That like is true. the stuff that is new, um, like the Oprah and Gale verse is newer. Um, that's yeah. two years ago. So that's a newer where his auto tune was starting to uh, wave come down a little bit. Yeah. The verse on the John Batiste album I was talking about, Can't that Nobody, like though that auto tune is yeah. where he should stay. Um, I agree. I personally think just to nourish it, the best auto tune he had was when he first started it with Dedication 3. That was the best his auto tune ever yeah. sounded. It wasn't mixed perfectly, right. but just the feel of that auto tune. And the Carter 4. Like yes. the auto tune yes. on the Carter 4. Mm-hmm. I think the Carter 4. It slept on. It is because that is. I think commercially, it's that's up there. Like they, it, has, it has everything you need off of a commercial yeah. successful album. And the hits on there, like the hits, she will, the on John, it's a uh, jo- Blunt How to Blowing, Love is on like, the album. Mega Man, Man. yes, Mega Man. Yeah, yeah, like that's a really Blacked good question. Yeah, you was gonna say something? Um, no, no, I was, I was gonna talk about really what I just talked about just now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My fault, dude. Like, yeah. but like Wayne like in the new generation. Drake, like, the reason Drake can keep up is because people make fun of him for it, but he hangs out with people that are a little bit younger than him. Mm-hmm. Him and Yachty being best friends, you can see how I'm pretty sure he has played a role in the way, the direction that Yachty is going in. Because they hang out a lot all the time. He's probably yeah. like, hey, bro, you're really good at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stop doing this. You should try this. Mm-hmm. And then Yachty is part of technically like the younger generation because he was in the 2016 XXL class. Yeah. So it's like he can be like, yeah, no, 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 not that. You could try this. Okay. So let me tell you why I hate that. Um, <laughs> it's more beneficial to Yachty than it is to Drake. And that's my thing. Uh, I don't like that. And this is personal. I don't care. Like, I don't, this isn't like making me mad and I think Drake should stop. I think Drake. <laughs> should sit down and make one of the albums. Like, I agree. The album that we look at, how we go back to Twisted Fan, E.T. Carter 3, Blueprint. Like, he needs that. And I think at his later age, like, uh, what's the face? Nothing Was the Same came out 11 years ago. Jesus I think Christ. it's been a long that time. That really makes me feel really old. That, that feel so I bad. think that's a long time in between one of those albums and – the album. Like, yeah. I compare Carter 2 and Carter 3 for that. I compare Graduation and Twisted Fantasy for that. Yeah. I compare Reasonable Doubt and Blueprint for that. Like, That's those, fair. all right, this is a perfect album. Yeah. But because this album is so perfect, I think you can hit this one, one little more time to get everything sonically 
perfect to where it's like, this is your classic, this is your magnum opus, and me and him had this conversation. Like, I don't think Drake really has a real magnum opus. I think Views is kind of that. I think Nothing Was the Same is kind of yeah. that. But I don't think, I think the fact that we have to look back and discuss, is it this, is it that, is it that, shows yeah. that he doesn't have one. Right. Because we can all agree that, like, you can d- disagree about whether the Carter 2 is better than the Carter 3 because you like the songs, but you can't disagree that that is Wayne's magnum opus. That is when everything came together perfectly for him. The same thing with Blueprint. You can't disagree. Everything came together perfectly for Hov on the Blueprint. Same thing with Twisted Fantasy. Like, Mm. I like Graduation more than Twisted Fantasy, but I understand Twisted Fantasy is his magnum opus because that, like, his music can't get better than that. Like, yeah. everything from start to finish is perfect on right. this album. It's little bits and pieces of graduation that aren't necessarily perfect. So I think yeah. Drake is missing that. And that is my I issue with why he's around the young people. I think, honestly, though, with Drake, it depends on the type of... I think because Drake is such a versatile artist that each how al- each album has, like, a different kind of feel to it. Yeah. So it's like... If you prefer this kind of feel, then that might be your one from Drake. Right. I think that like to be able to have that many albums to where people are like can sit here and have full hour long debates on which is your best album. Because mm-hmm. yeah. if we're being honest, so far gone, that's a contender. Thank me later. Yeah. Nothing was the same. Take care. Views. People mm-hmm. be hating on views, but like I'm a hater. Views is a really cohesive album yeah. and then you think of like Almost. anytime you Almost. listen yeah it's just a few it's a couple songs mm-hmm. that's like and that's my eh. po- that's my point in this but when it's, you listen to views though like that takes you back to a time that like damn like yeah this is a really no, this is me, a good album me and grace was talking about this in 2016 but <laughs> we were my thing with views is and i told daniel this I've, it's always been my thing with views views was supposed to be this album and if you listen to views and i swear to god go do it go do it today y'all go to the gym today do it today Take the first two songs off views. It's Drake's best album. Those two songs are literally 10 <laughs> minutes of album between them. Those are 10 solid minutes. I don't understand the Keep the Family Close hate. It's a great song. I it it doesn't just take too song. long. It, it's 10 minutes between it. Because the, al- the album an hour 30. Is 9 the next song? Yeah. 9 shouldn't be an album. Either. You take those first two songs 9 could have been a single. So, no, I was about to say single. Mm-hmm. Same thing. So you start the album with You With Me. Mm-hmm. And the Ooh. reason I say this was supposed to be Drake one is exactly your point because Drake is so versatile for it to be his magnum opus. It's got to have bangers for everybody and views is the only album for me. I think has a hit banger number one for every type of Drake uh, like listener. And yeah. I can argue that that might be the only album in rap history that covered that much. Oh, easy. Yeah, because it's got songs like Fire and Desire. One Dance, Redemption, yeah. Fire Desire, too good. With Me, Too Good. And it is some summer's over on that. interlude. And what? When I, when I say this that, the joint with party, man. And when I say that statement, that means mm-hmm. perfectly. Like yeah. people have done it, but nobody has done. It. I don't think anybody has done it that perfectly. If you guys Literally. disagree, let me know. I'm telling Shout you. Shout out Meek Mill. <laughs> <laughs> you take them first two songs off. That is his one. And if you look at where Drake was in his career, like that was because I was watching Atlanta. Which is also an amazing show. I need a picture with Instagram. I need a picture with Drake because my Instagram is <laughs> weak as fuck. And it was talking about like in the last season. Um, it was t- it was it's this episode. Uh, of, I love like, how Paper you love Boy. that show. I love that shit so much. <laughs> like he an older rapper now, so the older rapper trying to put him on game, mm-hmm. trying to keep him money. He said, "You need a young a young white artist." <laughs> and he was putting him on game, and he was like, "No, I don't need that shit." He said, "Bro, you will never be bigger than when you first blew." And that is you like once you hit the top, it's really hard for artists, actors, just anybody to blow, come down, and then blow again. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why it's so hard. That's why that's why my beautiful Dark Twist Fantasy was so crazy. That's why the blueprint, like all these ones that are like, oh my God, this is their best work. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, we thought that was their best. And then they came back and gave us something way crazier than we ever thought. And, and that and that's yeah, kind of when like, Drake dropped so far gone, like yeah. the the anticipation. Well, for one, the anticipation was already there because yeah. you have the cosign from Wayne, mm-hmm. which is fucking crazy. Yeah, in two thousand eight, that was all you wild. Need. Facts. And then that drops, and then everyone's like, okay, well, what's he gonna do next? And I appreciate that he delayed the album yeah. as much as he did because Thank Me Later, I think somehow is really underrated. It's crazy, and I think people spend so much time thinking about nothing was the same, take care, and views that they don't really give. Yeah. 
uh, Thank Me Later the credit it deserves. For sure. Because honestly, that really could be Drake's magnum opus. I, I think 1,000%. Nothing I, was the same as my favorite, but like if you really sit down and listen to Thank Me Later, Drake was hungry. I think uh, Tyrone has that opinion, and I vehemently disagree with that because I think for it to be your magnum opus, you have to be the biggest artist in the world. Like That is a part of your moment. It's you yeah. being one of the biggest. Now, you can have a personal magnum opus. Like I am not saying like he like nothing was the same as a personal one, like the one that most people would go back to, but I'm saying like Jada Kiss has one. Yeah. Well, like Ti has. Well, not Ti. I'm not a good example. He's one of the best. Ones. But um, <laughs> yeah. but the smaller rappers like Wiz Khalifa has a magnum opus. It's yeah. just not like the moment. We don't really. It doesn't like. I think Wiz Khalifa has two. Yeah, and you can argue that. Like, and I and I I'm saying, but I'm saying like with, nobody's like about Wiz to sit Khalifa? here and no disrespect to Wiz. Like no, nobody's Wiz. about to sit here and have. Like, <laughs> what? You don't, I don't like Wiz Khalifa? I don't fuck with Wiz. Oh yeah, I know that. Right. Yeah, I don't fuck um, with Wiz. I know that about. I him. feel like I, I don't like Wiz because I feel like you can guess what he gonna say at the end of the bar. <laughs> I think I, I think Wiz that. serves a purpose. <laughs> I, I think Wiz serves a purpose, and his purpose is yeah. he fulfills it very well. But I think yeah. Cushion Orange Juice and Rolling Papers would be his. And no, it's it's, it's a bunch two. of crazy Wiz songs yeah. though for and sure. It, it, like see you again, one of the most streamed songs ever in yeah. life. So phone, hate that phone song. numbers. I listen to phone numbers hate a lot. Hate that song. Really? See you again. Hate that oh, song. Oh, see you again. I will. Yeah. I will also. Song makes me want to throw up. I went to see Wiz in concert last year. One of the best concerts I've ever been to. Was it him and Snoop? Yes, it was. It you was went a, to that. It was, a, it was an amazing. It's concert. crazy. Y'all are both concert people. Yeah, it was an yeah, amazing. I wanted to concert. go to Her that. more than me. I'm not gonna take that crown. She got it now that she's on the show. That she yeah. got it. She is the concert queen for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm going to see Drake <laughs> on the fourth. She's going to Tampa to see Drake. I would never do anything like that. I wouldn't even. Now Grace was a concert person when she used to drive to Roll Out. <laughs> Bro. Oh yeah, I did do that. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to take a turn on this show that we weren't supposed to take. We'll get into all the top five album stuff later because I think this is a conversation. I We need to – I think this is a conversation. I just want to say my ten albums that I picked from last year, I'm really happy with my selection. Just throwing that out there. I am too. I like my ten a lot. Yeah. All right. I believe this is a conversation that people are missing. And I think people are missing it because this person I'm going to bring to compare to Drake – has such a rabid fan base that it does your critiques of her don't really matter oh, so because oh, I thought it was gonna be somebody else because but you said her. she is so prominent with her her fan base is gonna carry her no matter what the outside opinion oh, says yeah. but I think Nicki Minaj and Drake are as similar as artists as we have. And I think people miss it because Nicki took a little break. The only thing, only difference between them is Nicki didn't drop as much as Drake after uh, Queen. She took a long break and Drake hasn't done that. That's the only difference. But everything else about them, I believe, is super similar. And I bring that up to before we have that conversation, I want to get your opinion on Pink Friday 2 and yours if you have one because <laughs> I think what you say about the album will lead to what I feel about them. Okay, so I will be honest. <coughs> I didn't finish the album because I was so irritated with the amount of songs I heard. Let me look at it and see how far I got. I think mm -hmm. I heard like 9 or 10 of the songs. Mm -hmm. And... I feel like some artists, we can't hold to like a certain, yeah, I got to, I got nine songs in. I, my issue with the album was that like, I feel like she was just like, the bars were a little lazy and like a little cringy. Like, mm. I think she is at a point where she knows <laughs> her fans are going to eat up whatever she puts out, mm -hmm. which Drake, I think has gotten to that point too. So I will give them that comparison in that sense. But it's like, even on Drake's features that he was on when he wasn't really dropping an album, like he gave us that two pack and then he was on um, that song with Block Boy JB and that feature was crazy. Mm -hmm. Then he went on a crazy feature run Shout after that and then gave us God's Plan and Diplo. Oh, no. Which doesn't that matter. That was the two pack. God's but Plan doesn't matter as a song as a. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought that. I thought Being Friday 2 was a little too sample heavy. Mm -hmm. And maybe I would like it more if it weren't called Pink Friday too, because mm -hmm. I hold Pink Friday as one of my favorite like rap albums of all time. Yeah. I used to be like a really, really big Nikki stan when I was in middle school. I wouldn't go as far as to call myself a barb because mm. they scare me. Mm. But um, no, you should. Be. Grace said that. Yeah, they're a little terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like they His spend, show is pro barb. Don't yeah, but they, they they scare me. Shout out to y'all. I'm glad that she does that for y'all. 
because I know how I act behind my favorite artists. So I saw yeah. a video of her calling some Barb ex-boyfriend. But it just bothers me that she <laughs> also spends all this time like talking shit about other people, mm-hmm. especially other female rappers. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay. When you came out, you were like the one of the only female rappers that people were like, mm-hmm. okay, this is just kind of fire. Mm-hmm. But now it's at a point where you think that your head is so big that you have to be the only female rapper. Mm-hmm. And the only person you're not beefing with is Ice Spice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's really weird. But mm-hmm. if it wasn't so sample heavy, I think that Pink Friday 2 could have been a really good album. But almost every song has a sample. So it's like, can you not come up with anything original? Mm-hmm. Okay. Fuck this club up was fire though. Oh yeah, I listen. I don't have an opinion. <laughs> I probably heard it maybe <laughs> in thirty minutes. I, <laughs> I maybe heard it a couple times. No cap. I just know <laughs> where she's been and I know yeah. what she can do on certain tracks, and I don't feel like she's doing that. I, At least Drake will give us yeah. like a lot of the times. Drake will still it'll be like a few corny bars here and there, but Drake still is like. Well, that's the yeah, thing. I, I really agree with that point. Because we do this with every Drake album where he'll he'll be on four features the year before. Like last year, he on, he on P-Power with Gunna. He on a bunch of crazy features. And then I would come out and he like, nah. Like that. Like, but the <laughs> thing with that is that the, Drake's problem with that was you already gave us three albums in the span of like a year. Yeah. We don't want another album from you. But now that yeah. you've announced it and you've made this claim that it's going to be reminiscent of old Drake. Right. Now we're like, oh shit, yeah, like we really literally on need this album. album. Why are you recording an album, album on tour and it's yeah. it doesn't even give old Drake like there's some elements of old Drake a little bit like on yeah. Drew or Picasso. Yeah. Other than the lingo on members only, just like the vibe of Party Next Door and Drake together again, mm-hmm. making like a really good R and B song. Just little shit like that, but which makes eh. my knowledge stupid. Crazy. But she didn't right? really do it she that did. well. She did though. That's that's where we disagree. I think the music on Pink Friday oh, yeah. 2 is good. Let me let me let me mod- I like I like being, I like moderating this with so I don't have an opinion. So, talk more about like her features and stuff cuz I I like I don't, I don't I don't, well, don't want to say I'll check for Nikki cuz that's a little You don't. Mm-hmm. But like I'm not, you know, my ear not to the Nikki streets. You like No, the features and I was excited for the album because yeah. when she did the those three crazy features, yeah. I was like, "Oh shit, she might be back." And yes. then it was just like why are you sampling all like ev- yeah. almost every song on there is sampled is sampling something? And it's kind of like a pandemic right now. Music where like every week something is sampled. Sample. Yeah, I blame Tory Lanez. Sample, sample heavy times. But I hate that nigga. I dude. think I think the oh. Nicki Minaj features were very very strong. Um, Yikes. I they were reminiscent of who she is and mm-hmm. what she is capable of doing. I think you got all types of Nikki. I think you got yeah. the pop Nikki with Barbie Girl. I think you got the rap uh rap Nikki with Pound Town too. And I think she what she did was important. I think it gave her the the <coughs> boost she needed to for people to be like, I'm back. I'm yeah. here. I am this album I'm coming to, I'm coming with, I'm not finna play on. And that's what a future run before an album is supposed to do. I would also like to mention that the single she dropped from this album, Super Freaky Girl, is a number one single and was a very good song and was a hit the summer before. She she was very this was a very long rollout. Yeah. She yeah. dropped the first single, I think a year before the album came out, or a little bit under a year before the album yeah, came out. Yeah, that was a good song. So and I then like another uh another single from the album is Red Ruby the Sleeves, which also debuted in the top 25 and was a very good song. So I think Nikki was doing exactly what what she was supposed to do. And I think she executed well, especially because her album is the second was the second highest selling album of last year, second or third. It went number one. Uh, she had the number one single off of it. She had multiple top 25 singles off of it. And you got every bit and piece of Nikki that you want and drake does the exact same thing it's the exact same formula you mm-hmm. get 22 you get 18 to 24 drake songs it's four really heavy rap songs four really heavy pop songs four r&b songs and then a mix of both and then the young nigga shit it's the same thing with nikki you got the pop songs you got the heavy rap songs like okay. fuck this club up barbie dreams falling i mean uh barbie dreams let me calm down you got the pop shit with like falling for you needle pink friday girls and then you got the mid 
the Nicki version of R&B. You get everything you want with Nicki. I think where she went wrong was your point. I think the magic that Drake has done is his album titles. Titling that album Pink Friday 2 set an expectation that yeah. didn't need to be there for that album. And that is why I think you carry the opinion that you do. I think if this album was called Hey Nikki, I'm Back, and you just went into right. listening. Why is this so on brand? Yeah, I, think, I think if you it's come mean. back and you listening to Hey Nikki, I'm Back and hearing these songs, you have a completely different perception of the album. And yeah. that's how I went into the album because when I was 13, I was listening to Ace Hood, not Pink Friday. So, <laughs> Pink so Friday, I don't have that nostalgia with Pink it. Friday was the first rap album I ever purchased with my own money. That's in fire. sixth grade. Mine was <laughs> like, Young Money: The Rise of the Empire. You know how many, oh, you know how many, you know how many like girls that like that is that, like that was a canon moment for a lot of. For it girls. was like, because real. like the only female rap album. Like female rappers at the time were like older rappers. Yes, and then some singers who would rap every mm-hmm. now and then, I yeah. guess. But like, yeah. like somebody who was really raw and like really good at it, and yes. you're getting a co-sign by Wayne. Yes. Yeah. So it was just the moment, the moment, and the nostalgia with Nicki is so big and so such a what is the word you just used a um, canon, canon, canon moment in. Yeah. Th- young women's lives that yeah. I think calling that album Pink Friday 2 left too much room for nostalgia. Yeah. I think yeah. if Drake called for all the dogs and nothing was the same too, niggas would hate that shit. Absolutely. Niggas, <laughs> niggas wouldn't give a fuck what he said on that album if that album was called Nothing Was The Same yeah. Too because of the expectation that was set. I think yeah. that's yeah. the only difference is Drake markets himself better than Nicki. Nicki has, was earlier nick she has started to b- do better and she started to cater to the fan base the women business i don't speak on women business i'm not gonna do that maybe we will invite charlene up there and we can me and ish can moderate y'all talking about that and explain yeah. that to us because i have my opinions but i'm not finna argue with you yeah, about how no, Nicki minaj fair. is they i'm fair. not doing that hey listen they <laughs> argue they, they tried to argue me down about that Nicki minaj <laughs> no i have i have my feelings about yeah. it i feel a way about it but oh, i'm yeah. not finna hey, do I that told and I'm not gonna i already got on a beyonce shirt so i'm not gonna sit here and act like like, like, I just, like, despise her music. Mm-hmm. I, I literally have a playlist in my phone yeah. of old Nicki Minaj verses, yeah. songs, everything. That, it's just so I can listen to it and be like, yeah, yeah. I remember That's the good why days. I, I'm asking you because I know you don't hate her. You know, I... I just don't like her... Per, like, just the way she acts, yeah. it just, like, also kind of takes away... So Because I'm one... I can separate the art from the artist mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. But some people, it's just like, you really act like that in real life. Mm-hmm. Well, she, And it shows. She's scary. So like, yeah, the scary artist, I kind of have problems. Like, 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 like I said, I say it's a day all the time. I listen to niggas who murder people. Like, I can separate artists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Free young. But thug. if you're like, crazy, like scary, yeah. like, and I just like don't understand why. Like, I don't know. I feel like everybody's gone through a rebrand except yeah. for Nikki. Like uh, yeah. the whole Harajuku Barbie thing is like. Okay, yeah, the crazy she, she like psychotic for thing, like like, like that. For it was fun, like it was fun when we were twelve. But like, bitch, you're forty. Okay, listen though. I think the Drake's gonna do like five rebrands. I think the rebrand is coming. And before I say that, you are talking about Nicki is forty. Drake is also forty and making music with teenagers. So let's chill again. But, but he has rebranded. But career, he has rebranded. The career is the same path as Drake. I can argue Drake is not rebranded. Drake has not rebranded. Drake, Drake is on like his fifth different personality. Drake a pop star. Drake is a so is Nicki. Nicki is a pop star. Nicki is a literal pop star. I, I will say Nikki this. Nicki was hosting the VMAs last year. That's a pop star. But she's thing. one of but she's one of the biggest artists in the world. Like because she's a her. pop star. That's what pop is. But pop no, no, no. Like, I I, she's a pop I will star. say because Nicki was having label troubles. I, I'm not sure if it's like I can make the one like I can really dog her for not, but. I think Drake has for sure rebranded in a bunch, like the Jamaican music, the British music. Like I don't think that's rebranding. I think that is trying new things. Dr- yeah. Nicki Minaj has the Trinidad song on here. Nicki Minaj has pop songs. Nicki Minaj has R&B songs. It's the same formula. Drake has been dropping the same formula of music since If You're Reading This Is Too Late. It's now let, been the same me, thing. Now let me pose this to you. It's not a rebrand. He has, he has gotten more versatile. I think he's gotten better, but it's not a rebrand. Let me pose this to both of y'all because, I, of course, I ain't really listening to Nicki album. I um when when Pusha T told the world Drake had a son, right? Mm. A big kind of like subplot was like, all right, 
he gonna have to start rapping about Adonis now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And start making some dad raps. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, he has. Yeah. Was Nikki's family a part of this album? Because she did, did just become a mother. Like, was that side shown too? Yes, 100%. I think this is Nikki's arguably most vulnerable album. I think Nikki okay. was very vulnerable and she gave a lot of herself up. I think you have to get into the album and listen to this album. I'm not going to tell you how many um, times I listen to this album because I have on a Beyonce shirt right now. So, but I listened to this album Real? enough to really understand yeah. how. What she is saying, like, I understand this album and I understand. That's why I'm having this. That's why I am passionately yeah. defending her right now is because I get what she is doing. And somewhere I wanted to go is where this separates. And I, I brought this up with the way they do separate Nikki and Drake again. They, Drake never took the break. I would argue that the only reason this album is called Pink Friday 2 and she went back into this brand is because you can't name another Young Money artist. Shout out Lil Twist. Can name like three. Yeah. Lil Wayne. Can name like three Lil other Wayne. Ones. Lil Twist hasn't dropped a song That's since like, no, Love Affair. Yeah, no, just kidding. <laughs> Banger. Lil Wayne. <laughs> Salute. 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 Y, YM on top, 09 till infinity. You feel me? Lil Chucky. Also, um, not a young money anymore. Also. But he was still a young money artist when Nicki Minaj was Listen, a young money artist. I didn't and start naming artists because I know Daniel know the roster. <laughs> like, Daniel, he, Daniel, like, real tough. I really do know the roster, which is why I know y'all can't name the rapper. I know you can't. I'm not asking you to. I know you cannot Is do Wayne it. kids? Or gutta Gutta? No. Is Gutta Gutta still on Young Money? Absolute gutta. You know Gutta Gutta, 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 gutta still on Young Money. You feel me? Oh, not to the Infinity Squad. I believe in Young Money. You feel me? Hey, Gutta Gutta got some of the best rap verses in history. Gutta Gutta can't That's wake up. He can't hope. wait to wake up and go to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Way gonna have him on every project. Bro, <laughs> Wayne, you. that's a real nigga. Now, yeah. should salute Gutta. But that, <laughs> where I was going with that is you not being able to name another young money artist means they need money over there. They need marking over yeah. there. Yeah. Now, Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne are enough to carry an entire label. You usually only have two or three artists carrying a sub label right. because they're under Universal or Republic, yeah. one of them. So you only have two, one or two, three big artists carrying a sub label. And she needed this to work. So I think the the idea behind Pink Friday 2 was I know Grace is going to go listen to this. I know Tiffany is going to go listen to this. Yeah. I know Rebecca's is going to go listen to this because a Pink Friday meant so much to them when they was 10, 12, 15, 17 that they're going to go listen to this album. Jasmine, Tiana, my older friends that are 30, in their 30s, have kids and everything, will stop what they're doing to go see what a Pink Friday 2 sounds like. Will yeah. stop what they're doing to go on a Pink Friday 2 tour to get that nostalgia and get that moment of Nikki back. And they, the, the label needed that more than Nikki did. So I can see the rebrand and the, the versatility and all of the things you're speaking on that you want to see is coming after this. And the only reason yeah, we got this phase was because of the late. And let me, let it's me, just the samples that like were really just like, mm -hmm. okay, girl. I can, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm so that. tired of sampling. It's a lo it was a lot. We may need to read I like your idea of bringing Charlene for this because this is a real good conversation. Of course, one of me mm -hmm. you could never have. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> of course, I would like, because we kind of well, had this conversation with, with Alicia mm -hmm. and them in the group chat about like, Nicki Minaj war history, but <laughs> in, war history is in the in the frame of the comparison to Drake, I feel like, and of course, you know, keep it cool. Keep it cool. Listen, stay with me now, Barbs. <laughs> Drake becoming the biggest artist in the world. It's hard to like make the one to one comparison for Nicki because such a big part of him becoming one of the biggest artists in the world is that all the artists fucked with Drake. So anytime a crazy song came out, Drake, get Drake was on there. It. Versace, Drake was there. Like Black Boy JB. It was a bunch of people who could pick up the phone. Yo, I need it. Yeah, and Drake doesn't, also he doesn't pick and choose. Uh, the only person, as far as I'm concerned, that Drake not working with right now is Metro Boomin. Yeah. Anybody and he, call and, Drake? And, and, and he dissed Metro on, on a Metro beat. Like, you know, Drake about the bag. <laughs> like, like, I put the, the verse down. The and, and listen, one of my favorite verses that year. Because if I send a verse to the ass, then they'll take that it. And he did. He that's told, his, he told that's Drake, crazy. He told Metro. I could really go he five said, hours in a stadium. Show, jump around with me on stage. <laughs> he was killing Metro. Oh, my God. And we love Metro more than most I would, people listen, do. Yeah. Thank God. This thing Metro top five producer all the time. So I know he is. And I you know how much you He might be. Listen, get your Get your producer. Pull up the songs because Metro got some crazy credits, bro. Yes, I'm sir. working on a playlist right now of like all of Metro Boomin's songs. Send it to me. I think I have it. I think I have I'm working on it. It's almost done. But was yeah. that the end of your point? Oh, so that my point was 
I think whether it was label drama, personal beef, you know, the barbs being an army, like keeping <laughs> other artists away, I think that hindered her growth outside of her own fan base. I agree. I've made that I've made yeah. that point as well. Because think of like how hard it would be. All it would, this is we're in an era where female rappers are like kind of going crazier yeah. than some of the guys. Not kinda, think of like far. a Flow Millie and Nikki song. A lotto right. and Nikki song would slap. Yeah. Because Lotto's been getting into a different bag, but mm, we can yeah. get into that Shout later. Out Lotto. Um, mm. Yeah, it's just weird because it's just like you're just going out of your way to cause all this drama. And at the these are some these are the artists that are big right now, and you think that they're trying to come for your spot. Most of these girls started rapping because of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and for and, you to shit on them yeah. like in the same breath because you feel like I don't know maybe threatened by them, mm. but if. You're the best of the best. Why do you feel threatened by these new people? Help them. And not only just the newer rappers. Like, when we had this conversation, like, they really challenged me. Like, yo, who is Nikki Beef with? Mm -hmm. So I got ass Mariah. into it. Bro, it is a ridiculous list. And it's some names you would never guess. Like, Rayma. were you beefing with Taylor Swift five years, ten years ago? Don't feel important till Taylor Swift, the most famous nigga on earth ten years later. Like, whether or not you squash the beef and y'all move on, I feel like Nikki ceiling was so high but every time like 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 right now like you said she's eating off pure fan base right mm -hmm. that's the thing she imagine if she had any other artist group that supported her too like the way all these other artists do the way j cole and drake hop on some j uh, yachty and drake or kanye and any of the other niggas or cardi like it really feel like especially when wayne went through label troubles drake left like i don't want to say he left young money but like it was just Nikki for a while, mm -hmm. and it was just Drake Nikki just branched off because he was getting to the point where he was bigger, respectfully, than both of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. True. like at this point yeah. in time, I think Wayne is the most influential overall, but Drake is for sure bigger than yeah right now for sure. I think Drake is the second biggest rapper ever. Yeah, out of after Eminem, like I don't think oh, yeah. I don't yeah. even think that can be. Yeah, that's true. I don't think that can be questioned. Now yeah. you can say Drake got a cheat code with streaming. You can have all the excuses in the world you want. But there's to. a reason that he got to that point. But like, right. but like, you can't argue it, my nigga. Oh like, nine, Drake ten, a, Drake fam, Drake did a million first week streaming. Yeah, like, like over a million first week with views. Drake yeah. dropped. Doesn't matter if he yeah. he could be humming on the track. People yeah. are gonna be like, "Oh, Drake dropping." And yeah. you gotta, you gotta now. Uh, and again, you can say that it would be different if you had to go buy albums. And after yeah. the couple albums that were off, people went would have been rubbed off by him. You can say that if these Kanyes, the Kanyes, the Ti's, yeah. the Joes, the Waynes would have had the streaming era and their most popular music would have came out then, then they would be doing these numbers. You can make the argument. But it didn't happen. So, but <laughs> you know what's so crazy? Way. My thing is, I think, fuck, oh, niggas, I hate this. I think it's more impressive. Honestly, I do. Oh, I absolutely disagree. Because I, I vehemently disagree with that. But like, Drake was strong. also, Drake's been a part of both eras where you had to go buy CDs. He let, was let, in there signing, nothing let, was the same. Let, now, now, let me, now, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. I think the numbers itself are more impressive simply because streaming has deflated rap sales artist sales across the board for artists okay yeah. where early 2000s you would see you could you could be number three that week on billboard and move 545 like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like you don't see like when's the last time we saw an artist do 750 let alone a million with streaming mm -hmm. and it, i really didn't under like i really didn't click it together so niggas was like yeah ten thousand listens that's one buy for album all right travis so too. let me let me yeah. tell you something though did you hear what you just said, though? Yeah. <laughs> 545 for the third artist. Yeah. Kanye West. Yeah. Nigga, Lil Baby isn't Kanye West, my nigga. No, that's true. <laughs> Travis that's, Scott is no, not Kanye no, West. But these he, niggas, I'm little Travis not yeah. in the conversation, but yeah. these little niggas is not Kanye West. You're talking about the best of the best was yeah. getting these numbers and going number two. Like, uh, uh, Carter 2 did 500 some first week and yeah. was number two that week um, because of some pop album. But these are the best of the best you're talking about doing these numbers. The regular rappers that would be considered our B tier rappers yeah. now, like the Don Tolivers, and I'm not going to name them, but you know, the, the B tier rappers in the 90s and the 2000s. We're doing regular numbers just yeah. like these are. So I think personally, another reason due to the I have two points here. Another yeah. reason due to the 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 streaming is down, I think it's way more to do. Like it's so many things you can listen to, you can give your time and attention to. People have their own things. I rap. Yeah. I don't 
I don't be listening to as much rap music because I rap. And I say I rap because I just rap because I like to. It's a lot of people that yeah. rap just because they like to, but spend time on it. I rap like 10 hours a week in there by myself. <laughs> that's a lot. That's time I used to just listen to music. Yeah. And so I think it's other people. You do content creation. We do a podcast. <laughs> um, other people do other things yeah. that, that involve take your time away from music. I think in the 2000s, a lot of people spent a lot of time buying music. But I do think it says something that people went to the store and spent $12, $15, $20 on your project. Rather, I pay the streaming service $120 a year and every song you drop ever in history, I can get now. That was I think really quick, That's math. a lot different. Yeah. And Shout I, out to you. That was and quick, I diff math. And I definitely think 10,000 streams Ain't that much, cause they're streaming factories. Yeah, they're streaming no, factories. I, niggas I, are streaming. No, music. niggas are definitely faking streams. But let me retort. Streaming to that. culture has like ruined music. Let me, let me retort. Come to that. on now. You said you said all right, cause that was Kanye. My retort to that was, Beyonce didn't do six hundred k first week with Running Sons, but that is her equivalent pure sales number. Like if you look at the actual streams. She had over 600, 700 million streams. I think first week and just sales in general for musicians, I don't know who decided what is a stream. I think whoever, like, like how it always goes, whoever got there first, probably the labels, set the bar, and they've been hitting niggas over the head with it. It's yeah. also different when artists were selling 750K first week. That's how they ate. Niggas used to get paid off their albums too, and then they would go on tour and it would be gravy. <laughs> niggas was getting paid. A like, lot of niggas would disagree with you about getting that paid off the album. No, 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 no. But <laughs> also, like the market's so oversaturated now. I, I too. will say, like, of course, if like if you own it, like, like, if, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. if you own that part of the album, like, hove them niggas who like was getting paid off that. I was gonna say sure. there was just money there. Yeah. There was just, yes. niggas okay. stolen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you were the nigga putting the album out, mm -hmm. it was money there, as opposed to now where it's. No money in releasing music. Unless you are one of the top 40 artists on Earth. And, like, and no, yeah, not even. Because look, look, so I thought, so uh, Ye was like my example for uh, the album sales. Mm. Drake, last album, did 521 million streams. That is ridiculous. Like, like that number alone, you would think. Okay, that's platinum first week. Didn't come close. Yeah. He wasn't even halfway close to a million sales first week. So I think as a as an act, it is definitely, of course, more effort mm -hmm. to go and buy an album. However, it's I don't want to say take it more serious or count it more mm -hmm. as that process because if it was like every ten CD sold. That's one equivalent album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be different. But you have to hit such a crazy number on these streams to get to where you were five years ago, mm -hmm. and nothing's changed with the music. Like if I dropped an album fifteen years ago and I got everybody in the room to buy it, that's a hundred sales. If I drop an album today and I got a listening party and a hundred niggas download the album and a hundred niggas listen to it once, that's not even a sale. Yeah, that's why I say that streaming culture has ruined. Oh, it's ruined music. everything. Okay. I, and I now will. that they don't like the bundles when they when Billboard got rid of the yeah. bundles, this is why I don't listen to people when they'll be like, "Oh, when people try to argue like, oh, well, this person did more sales than yeah. that doesn't mean shit. They, they probably I, made the same amount of money. I, and they can starving off the streams. I want to table this discussion yeah. for another episode because we can go way deeper. But if we do, yeah, we yeah this talk is hard. About, wait, this is a phenomenal discussion. Yeah. So I, I, I like that point. Yeah. I have some retorts to it, but we gonna we'll say that for uh, next month. Yeah. 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 Drop to the Patreon. Yeah, for sure. No, but for um, real, it's coming. So let's yeah. let's do get back before we yeah. veer off again. Let's do get back to our conversation because yeah, that is a that's a great point. Yeah. I, I like that point <laughs> a lot. All right, so, yeah, let's go top five rap albums and then top ten albums of the year. Is there anything else I missed? Oh, no, I did want to ask this before we uh, got into that. Is there any artists that you discovered this year? Because I go through, I have, like, lists yeah. of artists I want to get into okay. as I get older and things of that nature. This year, it was Usher for me. I have become an Usher stan this year. And last you didn't year, listen to Usher that much? Not not really. I'm a, I'm a male. Oh, yeah, I'm you a, don't I like Usher. Don't Usher. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> I, don't, I don't like Usher, bro. You will love Usher's music, and that's what's so funny. No, no, Usher no, the has, thing is, he's heard it. Yeah, no. He I, just I doesn't like, like him. I know. I don't like Usher. Like, oh, I don't okay. like that nigga. Okay. Okay. I don't like okay. him either. His yeah. music. Oh. I don't. I don't be Chris Brown. Usher give me that vibe. I don't like Usher. No. Oh, okay. Chris Brown better plus. Don't Richard. no. Uh, yeah, yo, don't like yo. I take my girl to the show, bro. Like what? What are you doing? <laughs> what is he doing? Right now? 
Like, sit down, bro. Like, Why are you making albums with Zaytoven? Why are you telling my girl to get up so y'all can sing together at the show? <laughs> like, concert over. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand that shit. Okay, okay. You can I actually meet me outside. But, yeah, facts. <laughs> you know what? Cut the cameras, nigga. <laughs> Cut the cameras, nigga. Is this camera on me? <laughs> That was that was my artist though. Did y'all have anybody that y'all got into? I did. Jordan um, Ward. Jordan Ward. Okay. Jordan okay. Ward is crazy. I saw him in concert. I saw him at the black concert. Me too. Mm-hmm. And then oh, I just there? his yeah I was. Oh wow. Just his energy was really? just like yeah. I felt like I should, should, I would have known that. I didn't oh, know okay. you. I saw Tyrone when I was leaving, but I didn't know you were there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we bought I bought tickets for uh, Nelson's birthday. Okay. For us to go and his just his and I didn't really uh, let me not say that um, he was my favorite opener. Okay. His energy was just so, and mm-hmm. then normally, like, I don't really care about the openers that much when of I go course. to concerts, because yeah. I'm there for the main act, mm-hmm. and I'll just, I'll listen. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, his energy was just so Contentious. refreshing, mm-hmm. and the music was actually good, so I was like, okay, let me go listen to his yeah. album, and mm-hmm. I I listen to it, like, every other day. Nice, nice, nice. Love him. Um, I'll definitely, I'm definitely that nigga. I'm definitely the, the Rio, the young OG, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the V's. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The young niggas. Oh, and Tizo Touchdown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Tizo too. Yeah. Fuck, I'm missing somebody. Oh, yeah. Baby Tron. <laughs> Baby Tron is tough. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. How do you listen to Baby Tron? But not- um, I don't know. Uh, it, I, it's <laughs> very, like- I mean, they all have like songs that I like, yeah. but everything I've heard from Baby Tron. I was that hating on first Tron because of the way he looks. Yeah. And... Is he great. white? I think so. Um, yeah. 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 I didn't like the way he looked, and I didn't like his name. But then I actually yeah. listened to him on like a few songs. I was like, "This kind of hilarious, ca- bro. Kinda hard." Uh, another they be artist saying for anything. me is uh, Project Pat. Okay. I really fuck with, fuck Project, with Pat. Project Pat. Really. really I, I revisited a lot of NWA shit because they got straight out of Compton on Hulu right mm-hmm. now. Go get that. That's a great movie. Okay. God, that movie's one of the so funniest. Mo- one of the funniest movies ever in hindsight. Like we watched it when we was teenagers, so like we was like, "Oh wow!" Like NWA, like we've seen it for the first time. Mm-hmm. The shit they got in that movie is so fucking funny. Like, okay. It is like Dre on the piano, like doing the the, the beat. Did John like, Singleton do that too? Mm-hmm. He did. I think he might have. I feel like he did straight out of Compton. He might have. He was wanted, still alive then. Because you know that I, scene in Snowfall where like Franklin's passing by yeah, the movie set? Uh, yeah. I think the... Oh, no. That's Boys in the Hood. Boys, Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Something. I just feel like he... Yeah. Somebody did straight out of comedy. It was Ice Cube. Like, I yeah. know it was the main person. I don't know if John yeah. Singleton had, well, helped him on it. I'm sure he did. It's I like, could be just it's definitely Luke, like It's Luke. definitely like an MCU, MCU movie for rap music, though. Like, if for you sure. go watch it... <laughs> for sure. MCU movie? It is so dramatic. It's so dramatic. Like, at the very... Like, so many examples. Like, like... The, the beat for, for Juice and Jen, like Dre is like trying yeah. to figure out the mm-hmm. piano, and Snoop walk in like, yo, what is that? He said, oh, yeah, let's just start rapping, bro. And Canon you know, event. Just, yeah, Canon and, he just event. Start, and they just spit the whole first verse for Juice and Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, I am not stupid. <laughs> like, that didn't go like that. I yo, know that shit didn't go down like yo, that. Yo, at the end, at the end he, in the, he in the shit with Shug. He in the shit with Shug. He said, yo, I'm leaving, bro. He said, yo, what you going to call that? Aftermath. <laughs> 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 like, like it was gonna be another movie. Like, <laughs> like he was making the Avengers. <laughs> like I, I wanted a post credit Eminem scene so bad. <laughs> that shit is so funny, bro. Oh man, <laughs> what would y'all? What, this is just off topic, but. What would y'all? Whose movie would y'all, do y'all think would be the funniest? Like, like, like my parents—they got straight out of Compton. Like that was theirs. Like biopic for their artists. Who's rap bio? Drake. Who do you think would be my the funniest? Was definitely Drake. Drake. I, Drake is something that I can't say right now because of the circumstances of the world. Do you, but that makes his music way funny. That makes his. his but Drake biopic. is such a head ass. Like, just think of if he's still alive when they make <laughs> his biopic. That's gonna be like an eight-hour movie. Like, Drake just think of like. <laughs> Just think of and just the way his music videos are so unserious. Yeah. If he has a hand in that biopic, might be one of the funniest movies. No, of no, no. All time. I this might sound crazy, but you know, I know Drake listens to the show, so I hope he takes my advice. Real. Do your own biopic, please, bro. Please. Bro. Get the little boy from the tour. Drake's so fucking funny. Have him funny, bro. play you. Drake's so funny, bro. Please do your own biopic. I wish Drake would just act more. And be funny. I agree. Because them skits are so funny. Bro, him bro. on Saturday Night Live is one of my favorite yeah. Saturday Night he Live hosted episodes. The, he hosted, hosted the ESPYs. That shit was funny as fuck, so too. Funny. Perfect guy to host the ESPYs. Drake is a pro talent, dude. He's a pro he talent. He pulled up one dude in Jack the of all trades. Girl. 
Did you see this kid when he pulled up yes. to dinner? Yes. <laughs> he grabbed a glass. He said, are you still buying by the glass? <laughs> So oh, of him with that light skin dude, yeah, he'd be bro. like, yeah, bro, this is my brother, though. Yeah, it's my little bro you for drinking us. lemon drops? Salute yeah. the dime. Come on the show, Twin. You still drinking lemon drops? <laughs> Yo, Drake's so funny, bro. Drake loved me and Drake. He does. Somebody, one time, one of my favorite tweets of all time, someone was like, the minute y'all realize Drake is a character that Aubrey Thank plays, you. Yeah. Thank you. things will make a lot more Thank sense you. to y'all. That's a fact. If the... If the once you understand that Drake yeah. becomes way more fun to watch because he <laughs> he dives into that character yeah. so well, bro. <laughs> like that nigga is a real life comedian, bro. bro I so it makes me mad that Drake is as funny as he is because he's actually funny. For as that interview fuck, with bro. him and Bobby, I was like, look oh, at yeah. him go, Yo, she, look bro, at like, him. He, nigga said, Damn I do it. it. <laughs> I do you it. The one he was like, oh, he didn't he didn't respond to you. Oh. <laughs> Tough life. He said, you, he said, you listen to Tiger? <laughs> let's pull some Tiger. You never heard this song? He said, let's pull some Tiger. Rack, rack, the bitch. rumor that he played that shit just to get the video flagged. No, it's funny. That's hard. That's hard. You're, a, you're an evil genius. Yeah, no cap. That's some he's good a, shit. That's he's a silly guy. Um, fuck Bobby Yartoff, by the way. Yeah. Fuck oh. Um, I've been podcasting for seven years, and you get a Drake interview. Day one, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> um, shout out Bobby Bottle. Shout out Offset. I but, like. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Offset. But we he was. Said, what you got on? He said. Yeah, yeah I'm look a little I'm dry. Like, he said your ankles are a little. Crusty. Shawty said. Shawty said. He said, "Don't do that. You was trying to match because you wore the cardigan because you wanted to look better. Don't try to tell me." I was like, "Yeah, he killing that." I felt. C-A-P. I, I felt so bad. I felt bad for a little bit because, like, if you're not from Atlanta, that first experience, like. That probably scared her. Yeah, no, nah, she ain't never been no, she, getting roasted by a nigga from Atlanta. She ain't had no defense for it. She, she hasn't. I haven't seen her since. No, she said, "I don't know who set this up." He's like, "Oh, y'all set this up. Y'all call me." She said, "What you? You, you DM house. me." <laughs> yeah, he said, "You my house." Like, C A P. C A P. Shout out Offset, man. Shout out, nigga got his girl back. Okay, Lucky that's dude. so unserious. Top five rap albums, twenty twenty three. Let's get into it. Who do you got? I'm starting with G six. Who do you got? Top five rap albums. <sighs> okay. Uh, number one, I do have to put Utopia. Mm, let's go. Number two, I think I texted one of you about this or both of you. Dom Tolliver. Actually, this really isn't in any particular order after Utopia. Mm, okay. Gunna's album. Mm. K. Tremine. Mm -hmm. And I know y'all probably don't listen to him, but Tekka. A little Tekka? Okay. All right. That part would be muted. Number ish. Hold listen on, to grab, it. Let me, let me grab my phone. Listen grab to my it. Phone. I'm glad. I liked it. The, the catcher Mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Listen to Tekka's album. This is probably Tekka's best, like most cohesive album, and mm -hmm. it's only like twenty minutes. And when I tell you every song, I love albums where every song like blows into the next song. Mm -hmm. It'd be like that. All right. So my top five. If you listen to Tekka's album, I'll listen to the rest of Pink Friday too. Okay, I'll make you that deal. Um, I. I uh my top five albums from twenty twenty three top five rap albums this is this is in order at number five I have for all the dogs uh I despite my issues with the album and my issues with Drake he's he's good man he's good I wanted um, to put that in there but I was uh, like he's good uh, <laughs> number four um I have. Pink Friday 2. Um, I did like that album. I think there are very <laughs> high highs on the album. I think there are very, very, I think albums serve a purpose. I think this served its purpose well. I don't, I'm not just looking at strictly music when I am doing this list. I'm looking okay. at the moment. What, yeah. what, what happened around the moment? What led up to the moment? Will this music last? Did this music work? Did I hear this music outside? All of those things, these albums right. checks the closer and closer I get to one. Except for this next one, this is just a personal favorite and I wasn't leaving it off because I haven't gotten a full cohesive Lil Wayne project in 10 years almost. So Collie mm -hmm. Grove 2 is my number three album. I think that album came out at a bad time. Um, I think if that album came out in the summer when nobody yeah, was look. looking for any music, yeah. it would have done really well. It's a lot of, lot of good music on the album. It's versatile. It has club records. It has a heavy, heavy rap records. It has a record for the women. Um, all the features were crazy. She mentioned 21 earlier. We have... Uh, Usher was on the album. Benny, I mentioned Benny the Butcher. His feature was crazy. Vori was on the album. Rick Ross was on the album. Just a really, really good project. Shout out to Wayne and Two Chains. At number two, I was talking about this album last year. If Ish knows exactly what I'm going to say, um, Michael by yep. Killer Mike. 
Hell yeah. That album is it's mature rap. If you're 19, you're not gonna yeah. like that album. Probably not. If you're 18, you're probably not gonna like the album. It's very mature big boy raps, but it's exactly what mature big boy raps is supposed to sound like. Yeah. It sounds like an expensive album. It sounds like he took his time with this album. This is Killer Mike's album. Like if I were going to recommend an album to go listen to by Killer Mike, it would be this album. It That's is fair. phenomenal from yeah. start to finish. It was El- good. Elite raps, really elite good. subject matter, just cohesive. It was he gave his heart with the song where he's talking about his mother's passing. He gave his heart where he was talking about the song where he his, he had to have an abortion as a teenager. Well, not he, but his girl had to have an abortion as a teenager. And he had the heavy rap songs with Currency and 2 Chains. He had the commercial hit with Future and uh, 3K on Scientists and Engineers. It was really just an album. And then he stuck to his roots, and his boy LP was on the album, who was uh, his uh, partner, Run the Jewels. So just a phenomenal album. Salute to Killer Mike. This is a, it was a beautiful introduction to my experience with Killer Mike. And then the number one album I have this year has to go to Gunna and Gonna Gift and a Curse. Um, I think that is far and away the best rap album of last year. I believe that is because it is cohesive. Number one, it he came back down from three zero. He, he everything was against Gunner. Like this, this I don't think people gave the city turned their back. I don't. On the city Dead turned ass. it back on a nigga. Like I don't Dead. think y'all understand. Like if this album didn't work, Gunner's career might have been over. Yeah, he might have been right. Dead Rich. fucking like his career might have been. Over. Yeah. At least Roddy Rich can make a really good song and come back from it. This shit with Gunner would have been trash. Yeah. Niggas might not even cut a Gunner song back on. So he had to come nice. and deliver. And every time you heard Gunner, every time you saw Gunner, he looked good. Pause. He looked in shape. Yeah. He, he pause. And he was he was at the he top had of his game. He and he had his shit on. Gunner do his that. His fits yeah. are so much he, better he, now. He yeah. do oh that. God. He's been yeah. doing that. Gunna but so good. I. I am. I was happy just to see two sold out shows in the two of the biggest three states in the world, yeah. um, in two of the three best cities in the world. If you can do a show where people is into you in New York and L.A., you're good. Yeah. Um, he couldn't come to Atlanta, so y'all know why. Y'all stop tripping yeah. about that. He'll be here soon, preferably, yeah. hopefully. Um, but his performances were amazing. His songs yeah. were amazing. The singles were amazing. He had the summer record. It's for sure going to stand the test of time. Right. You heard it in the club, heard it everywhere. That was the best album I heard last year. Um, ish. Okay. So my list gonna be real nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so first, I'm gonna have scary hours for all the dogs. Yes, yeah. I mean just scary hours. I would put those songs against any album that dropped that year. I think Michael's amazing, but I knew Michael's on your list, so I don't have yeah. Michael on your list. Second, I got Ganger. Shout out V's. Mm-hmm. Third, I got and then you pray for me. Shout out Conway. Came out early oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out, yeah. I'm a big Griselda guy. A lot of Stove God cooks. Four, Utopia. And fifth, it's crazy. I didn't mention one song off this, but it's one of my favorite albums. Uh, Void, Void Deer by Earl. Okay. Crazy I, need, I still need to hear that. Uh, I, I did still not hear that. It, it was, so, it was, you know, he, Earl, one of the niggas who, like, really love rap. So, mm. like, yeah. he, like, dropped it on, like, a website that you got to buy it first and then put it on streaming. Okay. So, oh. it was, like, a big delay until I heard. I ain't hear it till like, a couple months ago, oh, okay, I wouldn't okay, do so that shit. <laughs> okay. Yikes! Money. I, I, yeah. I like those. I like those selections yeah. for the top five because it really does show the versatility of us. Uh, very yeah. different albums, yeah. um, and I I enjoyed that. Some honorable mentions, if y'all have any mind, Guts. are um, "Been heart. One" by Rilo. Uh, I think "Been One" by Rilo was a really really good album. Um, Utopia wasn't one of yeah. my honorable mentions. I just think it was the only reason it's not in my top five is because I don't think he took any risk. I just think it was another Travis album. That's yeah. fair. Um, and I feel that way about the Nicki Minaj and the uh, the Nicki Minaj and the Drake album. Like it was just another Nicki album, yeah. it was just another Drake album. But I feel like the music is a little bit better on those two albums. So that's why it those made. Shout out Pistols nominated. and Pearls um, by Kodak. But Nudie's I do a, again. Nudie's album was really good. And yeah, too. that was one of my oh, honorable yeah. mentions. Nudie album was really good. I feel like really he dropped good. it early though, right? Yes, he did. He, he should have dropped, dropped it like. In the middle of summer. Yes. Yeah. Because Peaches was, and Eggplants was like the song of the mm-hmm. summer. I will say, I was not aware of the extent. That bitches love nudie. Women love bro, nudie. I, bro. Yeah. Women like, love nudie, bro. <laughs> Yo, I, well, I just think like end of the year, I like to get like, you know, like all the women in my life to send me their, their replays and mm-hmm. shit. He was all over them shits. Yeah. I women will say nudie. that there was a point in time where like nudie was kind of dropping just okay music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And then, honestly, when you sit there and listen to him, he really don't be saying shit. No, nah, he's having just a good time. It just be sounding yeah. fun. Yeah. I think, he go, he go I think that's an important genre of rap. It's, I yeah, agree. It's not yeah, rap yeah. about shit and just having fun. That's I agree. Yeah. That's important. And that's what we go to him for. But, like, I think after Nudie Land, like, Slimeball 3 was, eh. There are some good songs on there, like Zone 6, specifically the version with Black and Future. Mm-hmm. That shit was hard. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, Dr. Evil had a few songs on it. That were like, you know, they were pretty good. Mm-hmm. But overall, as a project, like, this this is probably his best complete project since the project with Pierre. Agree. Shout out Pierre. I would man. like to mention that I do agree with the Don Toliver selection. He just didn't make my list because I wanted to mention the artist. That if I didn't put that Lil Wayne in album there, the Don Toliver album mm-hmm. probably would have went in there. That album was really good. Really, really, really yeah, good. Yeah, I love Don Toliver. I also want to give him a, a salute to Too Good to Be True by Ross and Meek Mill. Oh, now, yeah. this is one of those albums that... Controversial. Like, you're not... I don't think this is controversial once I explain it. It's not an album you're supposed to cut on and be like, this is one of the best albums I've ever heard. <laughs> This is the album that you cut on if you really fuck with Rick Ross. Okay, or if you yeah. really okay, fuck with Big Mill. Yeah. It's not a commercial album. This is for their fans. Like, yeah. the, yo, go find your five songs that yeah. this is your Ross bag or this is your Meek bag and stick with those. So that, I, again, when I say I listen to albums, I listen yeah. to albums with their purpose. I don't go into albums with faulty expectations. That's why I think a lot of people get disappointed with music because y'all be expecting shit you never gonna get. So I never walked into this album like, I'm finna get yeah. a 2012 Rick Ross and Meek Mill album. Yeah. You're yeah, stupid ex- to believe my it. Look at crazy. Meek Mill's life yeah. and look at Rick Ross' life and how much they have going on, how much money they getting. You're not getting that. They don't, yeah. this is the, Meek this is, Rick Ross, so this is probably yeah, Rick Ross's uh, 14th income is music yeah. at this point. So <laughs> he's not really tripping on this. This is Meek Mill's probably eighth income is music. So he's not really tripping. They already, Meek Mill all Already, always screaming on Twitter. I ain't never made no money from music ever in life, ever, not one dollar. So, so, like, I don't think too much liquor. Yeah, yeah. so I, I just don't think it was. It was on their mind to go create the best project possible. I think it was yeah. on their mind to let's go get these big boy raps off that our core friends gonna fuck with, and so that's why yeah. I'm mentioning the album. That's fair. I respect that. Would I be able to run to the restroom real quick? Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, Me and Ish can talk for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shit, I ain't gonna lie. It's been two. two it's, it's like it's almost three. Yeah, four. we finna do these uh, to do, do these albums, and we good. It's right there. Um, but so before we get into the top ten albums and close out the show, hmm? yeah, left, left. Uh, to close out the show, this is a perfect time. Um, the playoffs are here. Yeah, we can do some sports. Hey, on, take man. your time, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck you talking about? You feel me? Of course you can go to the restroom. Uh, we got the football to talk about. All right, so let's do this. Let's see if we can do this in about 10 minutes. All right. All right. We'll talk about last week and then do the game picture yeah. this week. Uh, first game. Let's hate a lot. Let's, since, since let's hate. Yeah. You go hate on Nick Sirianni and the Eagles. Go oh, okay, ahead. Man. That was your shit all year. Okay, hold on. Let me get to it. I'm so excited to hate on you, Nick Sirianni. Hold on. I want to make sure nothing's inhibiting me. Uh, hey, amazing, though. amazing selection of games. Um, a lot of blowouts, which surprised yeah. me. Um but when I looked at the games and I saw how they went, okay. it was just people were in control. It didn't yeah. feel like, uh, most of those games didn't feel like blowouts. It yeah. just felt like a team was in control. But go ahead. So, Nick Sirianni, I want to speak to you specifically, especially because you've got the opportunity to keep your job. Um, amazing. I don't know how you did that. That's the best <laughs> thing you've done in months. No cap. That's the best thing you put on tape in months. But what I watched you do to the Philadelphia Eagles should get you fired into the sun, not from your job. You should never coach anything again. Little League, like for you to take one of the best offenses in the league with an all pro at quarterback, two pro bowl wide receivers, the best line in the league, and DeAndre Swift, and your ineptitude caused them to lose to the NFC South divisional rep. I don't know how you make it through Philadelphia. I really don't. The GM owners, you know, maybe you're a good guy. Maybe, maybe he's a good guy. But you were playing Madden offense. You were doing things I don't see on high school film. Yes. You you were doing things I don't see on high school film, let alone in the NFL. To the and, and what kills me is, and we're gonna talk about Dak in a second because I love hating. But I gotta I, I love my this Dak tweet. It was like I love the playoffs because everybody know you finna do this dumb shit, mm-hmm. and you still do it mm-hmm. for two weeks. Everyone said, yo, the Bucks blitz more than anybody ever. And they have forever since Devin White and Levante Davis got there. And all week was like, man, I wonder what the Eagles are going to do. 
hey, what are the Eagles going to do? And then you hit a slant for 40 yards, and it looks like, and then you don't do it the rest of the game. Like you did it by accident. Like you hit the wrong button on Matt. Like, oh, shit, he was open. I didn't, I didn't even know. To lose that way is unacceptable. Agreed. All right, I want to talk to – I want to talk real quick about the Rams game just a second. Oh, yeah. Detroit. Oh, yeah. Shout out, Barry. Shout out, Barry. I love you, dog. Yep. And shout out to Detroit, Jared Goff. Love I love I <laughs> love the – I love the the determination. I underestimated how important it that – crowd was going to play a factor oh, yeah. to that game i this statement doesn't matter i do think the rams are a better team but they weren't that day so it doesn't matter that's why i picked them but i shouldn't have picked the rams because that that home crowd really made a difference yeah. that not having a playoff win since the 90s really made a difference yeah, not having a home playoff win in forever really makes a difference so I will say, with that motivation, with the respect I have for Dan Campbell, with the arrogance I've seen from Derek Goff, Derek, Jared Goff in a good way, I issues that was issue Super Bowl pick. I might be behind him on that a little bit after I see San hey, Francisco this week. Hey, I'm um, telling you, to Josh Allen and the Bills. Yeah. I just want to say, Josh, I'm really proud of you, bro. You, Max. you have been consistent. Sean McDermott, everybody saved their job this year. Yeah. That was the only thing Ish, I think, predicted wrong in the season, and he was almost Wait, right. Wait, hold we'll see. But, we'll see about Sean. But we'll, see about Josh, Sean. we'll see about Sean. <laughs> but, but Josh really showed yeah. everything Ish thought he could do. Everything yeah. we thought he could do, right. we just hadn't seen him do it consistently. And then once he got in that hole, it was like, well, we know what he is inconsistently. So yeah. he's, he no way he's doing it. And he really did what he needed to do. The yeah. defense carried him one game, but who cares? Um, and CJ Stroud, you go him. Oh, yeah. I picked – we did the episode, who are the biggest threats to the Ravens. Mm-hmm. I had the Texans second. Mm-hmm. Niggas called me crazy. I've been a TJ Stroud guy for a long time because I am one of them niggas. When I see it, we know. Mm-hmm. That nigga is special. Mm-hmm. CJ Stroud is nice. That game is going to be very scary I'm for the Ravens. Very You mentioned excited. the slate we have. That is going to be an amazing divisional round. Yes, it is. I would not write the Texans off. They played the Ravens close in week one. But just to re- just to recap that last game, for you, your first playoff game, number one defense in the league, for you to suit up and rip them to shreds like that, special. Special. Uh, salute Jordan Love. We'll get more into you next week. Oh, yeah. The Cowboys suck. I'm not surprised. I told I you about Rodgers, too. Y'all are trash. Um, he told y'all about Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Yo, the Packers are going to be good for years to come. Salute Jordan Love. Again, the Cowboys, you suck. Dak Prescott should not be the quarterback next year. I have no idea why Mike McCarthy is staying the coach. That is a stupid decision. Jerry Jones, you have no idea what you're doing. And you guys are the biggest disappointment in the NFL time after time. Time after time every year. How does that feel? Let that sink in. <laughs> and to the Michael McCarthy point, uh, it's crazy because I think Jerry Jones so confused because he don't know who to fire. Because on one hand, I know Mike McCarthy didn't say, hey, throw this pick six. <laughs> but on the other hand, you drew the play up. So, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Exactly. I know in the headset he didn't say, hey, Dak, drop back and throw it to the other team. You feel me? But, of course, you still did it. You still did it. Yep. All right, game picks real quick, yep. and then we'll get back to what we was doing. Um, first game of the week, Ravens-Texans. Who you got? Give me Ravens on a walk-off field goal. Shout out Justin Tucker. All right. Give I hope me the, the Ravens win. I love – Oh, you can do this. Go I ahead. I love Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah. All right, salute. I love everything he stands for, well, and I just love like, hearing him talk. Yeah. That filming. episode of him on the shop is like Hall of Fame. Hell yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, Texas, no of course, I ha- Texas Ravens, I have the Ravens. I've been on the Ravens all year. That's been my Super Bowl pick yep. since the preseason. Um, I have the Ravens and comfortably ten uh, by 10, 13 points. The only reason that is, I think CJ is really good. Yeah. The defense is even better. Packers, Niners, Saturday night. Don't do it, because I want to. I want to really bad. Fam, listen, I listen. want to really bad, bro. Like I said with CJ, when I see it, <laughs> I see it. That nigga Jordan Love, <laughs> give me the fucking Packers. Okay. I, I, give me the Packers, okay. and I think the Packers win by seven. I think okay. it's a, a comfortable win. Okay, look. I am going to say this. I'm picking San Francisco, but if the Packers <laughs> get up seven to zero, yeah. Are ten to zero? They win this game. Yeah. I will leave it there. Underrated storyline: Matt Lafleur, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay. They're all from the same group. The mm-hmm. niggas all in the same group yes. chat. They all brothers, homies. So that same problem he has with Sean McVay, has with Matt he's gonna have with Matt Lafleur. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle Shanahan is like winless in three hundred million games, trailing <laughs> at half. Yeah. And I think this is a game they could trail at half. Okay. All right. Buccaneers, Lions. 
I think the Lions blow the doors off them. No cap. Shout okay. out to the Lions. Shout out to Buccaneers. And shout out Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. We don't do this often. Nigga made 250 k in a day. Salute, my nigga. I, Cash your check. I think man. I should get on the field. I'm you telling you. <laughs> they get paid so much money. Like, you feel right. me? Uh, get on the field or in the field, you feel me? Yeah. Real. I have the Lions on. by 40 points. Yeah. <laughs> I think they are going to dominate this game. This crowd is going to be ridiculous. Yeah. But correctly, salute Baker Mayfield. Yeah. What you have done to earn your starting job this back here has been nothing short of amazing. 4,000 uh, touchdowns, tw- uh, 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, less than 10 interceptions. Amazing year. Good the job. Panthers had that nigga playing scout team the end. You feel me? <laughs> Last game of the night. <laughs> Last game of the night, one of my favorite rivalries in sports right now, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs, Sunday night, last divisional game is going to determine who's going to the AFC Championship. There's some real shit on the line. Yeah. You know how the Chiefs lost the last game. That's going to be some motivation factor for the Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes' first road game. You know who Patrick Mahomes is in the playoffs. We didn't even have to talk about the Miami quick Kansas City game because we know what the fuck Patrick Mahomes does yeah. in the playoffs. Who do you have in this game? You don't have to tell me, but who do you have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the Patrick Mahomes rule is still in effect. He he has never lost a divisional playoff game, which sounds incredible because it is incredible. <laughs> He's never Great. lost a division round. I don't think he starts now. I think Josh Allen will piss himself sometime in that third mm-hmm. quarter when it's you know when the cold set in for yes, real. Sir. But I think it'll be a hell of a game on both sides. I think the Bills defense has just hurt a little too much mm-hmm. to really impose their will on the Chiefs like they would otherwise. Understood. And I have the Bills. Okay. And I, that was my AFC Championship pick. I'm sticking with it. I love what I saw from them. I don't think Kansas City's offense is good enough, and I think Josh Allen is going to make just enough plays right. to win this game. This is going to be a nail by the 24-27 game, 31-28 game, but I do have the Bills finally yeah. pulling one out against Patrick Mahomes. I, yeah, I think it'll be a crazy game. I think two touchdowns for Patrick Mahomes, maybe three touchdowns for Josh Allen, two helmets thrown for Stephon Diggs. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be a game. It's yeah. going to be a game. All right, back to what we was doing. We love you, the NFL. We'll be back next week it's a man's hi. game baby <laughs> yep hi hi okay so we were going into the <laughs> top 10 albums of the year <laughs> now this was special because we spoke about uh, down on rap music because that's what we do um not speak down on rap music but talk about rap music and but what i have not spoke about was in other genres it was some a shit. lot of good <laughs> fucking <laughs> albums shit, came out. Yeah. A lot of good albums came out. A lot of good artists. A lot of, yeah. lot of consistent artists. A lot of legendary artists. Yep. An album on here that I'm sad I have to say. <laughs> but I really, really do appreciate the pop music I got this year. The R&B music I got yep. this year. I appreciate the girlies from this year. We're I here. appreciate everything. So, Grace, I'll start with you again. Top 10 albums for 2023. Okay, this is in no particular order. Um, I do have like four honorable mentions, so bear with me. Um, oh, right. K. Trimine, okay. Yachty, okay. Gonna Yachty, what? Oh, the first. Okay. Let's start here. Yeah, okay. uh, Utopia, Don Tolliver, Tizo's album, mm-hmm. Miley's album, okay, Burna Boy, Chris Brown, and Kid Leroy. Okay, my honorable mentions would be Renee Rapp, mm-hmm. Jordan Ward, Tekka, and the Paramore album that dropped. Okay. That's all right. I need to peep the Paramore album. That Paramore so, album is crazy. So my top ten. So I had five like non. I had five of my top five rap mm-hmm. albums. Those were my my mm-hmm. five, and yeah. I have five underneath. Okay. But I will pick up from there. Uh, six. I got say it, all, say it all for the tip. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So first, I got uh, Scary Hours. Second, Ganger. Three, You Pray for Me. Four, Gifted uh, Utopia. I'm sorry. Five, Utopia. Six, A Great Chaos by Ken Carson. Mm-hmm. Seven. Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Mm-hmm. Eight, Playing Robots in the Heaven by James Blake. Nice. Nine, mm. Business is Business Metro version. Nice. Mm. Ten would be Void Deer. Okay. Yeah, okay. when you told me that you really liked Olivia Rodrigo's album, I was like, really? I love that shit. I, ain't gonna yeah, lie. I, I think Sour is yeah, better. Pop, it definitely is. Miles pop better. It definitely is. We are pop, I didn't mean to say that like that. Pause. Uh, but <laughs> I like pop music a lot. I fuck with pop music. It, I feel like pop music is slowly starting it's to get coming back. back to it's what it back. was. I think, oh, so I, th- happy. I think pop music serves a really good purpose. And it now does. that my life is as versatile as it is, pop music has a purpose in my life at certain points. And I'll be yeah. fucking with it. Yeah. And it's crazy. I used to get made fun of so many times when I was growing up because I always like pop music. Mm-hmm. When I was little, Britney Spears was my favorite artist. So, that's really, like, that's Britney. Britney. Um, salute, salute Britney. And now um, everybody, like, even rappers now are incorporating pop into their music. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys should branch out. Yeah, for sure. Shout out Britney. They're all, it's sure. very important. For sure. There's, like, I saw a study. It said that, like, pop music 
they it's made with an intention. Like the mm-hmm. feelings you get, like for example, when of you hear course, yes. Teenage Dream by Katy Perry, like yeah. you know, like that reminds you of Listen, summer. Well, that yes. reminds you. Hey, of... Hey, when party in the USA come on, it's no real Turn niggas that in the shit room. Up. Come on, <laughs> nobody too cool for party in the USA. You feel me? Firework, firework yeah. by Katy Perry, another wow. one. Like, Amazing. Like uh, just yeah. that like whole said, album. They pro- it provokes emotion. Like it's it's a study in the BPM, the what the bass drop. Like it's a yeah. pop music. If they and the real, lyrics, like, the yes. lyrics, like because they don't have to like. They the don't have to have a really. cadence yeah. to keep up with mm-hmm. the 808s and yeah. stuff. Like they, they can have that in there, mm-hmm. but it's like you really have to write yeah. from a deep personal yes. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I always have an appreciation. Also, sure. real quick, I sent the video and Reggie said, fuck Josh Allen and the Bills. We're splitting <laughs> that cracker skull soon. <laughs> Just wait on it. Shout out Reggie, by the way. Salute Reggie for yeah. sure, for sure. All right, I have an album of the year, and then the rest of my albums are out of order. The album of the year is Gravy by BJ the Chicago Kid. Okay. Um, have Ooh, you listened yeah. to that album? I haven't. Um, I didn't even know he dropped last great. year. I Do love that. BJ the Chicago Kid. I really love that album. Yeah. It is a Silk Sonic album-esque album, right now. but it's yeah. better than Silk Sonic. It is phenomenal Ooh, from start to finish. Better than Silk it is Sonic. by far, in a way, my favorite album um, from last year. Rest No right Order, now. 1111 by Chris Brown, uh, Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus, Michael by Killer Mike, Gift and the Curse, um, Pink Friday 2 for All the Dogs, Collie Girl 2, The Love Album by The Nasty Man, and Nostalgia <laughs> Nostalgia by Raw Wave. Those are my top 10 albums. I was really from wondering because The damn, Nasty Man is crazy. No, no, because like, that's a really good album. And I was wondering, was it going to make any of these I, lists? I had to put it on there because I have to talk about it one more time before we can't. Puff. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that album is fucking it's crazy. Great. <laughs> it's cr- and I, I, to this day, I still haven't heard the full thing, but I'll be yeah. like, you know, Siri, play something I like. Every song I've heard it's from it, crazy. crazy. I gotta figure it out Except from start to finish. The song with her at the end when he was like talking, I was Yo, like, Yo, I cut it off. That, turn it that off. It immediately cuts off as soon as she's done singing. But the album, the album is no, even better when you listen to the sequencing of it. Okay. Bro, one I'm of gonna, my songs I'm gonna of the get year is it. it Belongs to You by Jazzy, which is off the album. Bro, it's phenomenal. Bro, that phenomenal song with Justin music. Bieber. Phenomenal music. Yes, did, that, that Justin Bieber song is crazy, Did he likes to party. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> he got it. He be at the puffing them party. Bro, everybody be quiet now. <laughs> Uh, Tough Love by Sway Lee is my favorite song off of that album. That um, song by the is way. so hard. That song is crazy as fuck. Uh, uh, camera pan to me. Please. Hit it off of them, please. Yo, Hurry. I got a great idea for when we post a TikTok, bro. Like, we're just going to blank it out. Like, we're the just gonna nasty man. Tomorrow. Like, <laughs> who's the album? <Al-Mart>? Bleed. <laughs> All right, so. Yo, Puff, that is Ish and Grace G6. Grace from the six, not me. Not Yeah, D-Rock. I said it. And uh, I stand <laughs> 10 toes behind. I'll you say it because if you blow my car up, I'm just going to get paid. <laughs> Yo, okay. You see how quickly he paid Cassie? You yeah. pay me even quicker because I'm nobody. <laughs> Kid Cuddy better than me. I'd be standing next to that bitch on IG Live. <laughs> like, yo. Nigga trying to we smoke out me. here, Yo, nigga trying to smoke bro. Me. That video of that guy in the store, he was like, "You see, they got your mans. You see, they got, they got your man. mans on sexual." Bro, shout out Lou Ratchet, Yo, bro. shout out Lou. He said, "You ain't feel bad. <laughs> you ain't feel bad or nothing." You ain't gonna say nothing to him about <laughs> that. Your man, you grew up with him. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's a Lou Lou Ratchet for real. Make right? sure we get the. I'm gonna make sure I get this sentence right. I won't judge him for <laughs> that action. Cause it's a couple niggas cars out of blew up for talking to my ex. Just feel me. Like, if I had Diddy money, y'all niggas better be careful. Bro, I saw a video on TikTok. They said that um, I forget. Oh, I think it was Leon Thomas or somebody else. They said they well, went also to the. A great album. Yes, he did. He did. Um, they said that Diddy has somebody. Wale. It was Wale. This nigga was talking about how Wale was in the studio with Cassie, and Diddy didn't like that. And he had that nigga hanging over the balcony. He said they looked out the curtain, and all you could see was feet in the air. Oh, my God. I definitely do that. Be all careful right. who you DM it. So, um, how you set up the studio session and be well, mad I'm at the studio? We all see this weird ass cut. It's because they was talking about somebody I just said not to talk about. <laughs> Like, if you had the resources to protect... Never mind, cut it. Uh, uh, we can really take him... No. Uh, honorable mention album, 
But I want to speak up before we get out of here. Set it off. Um, I agree with you. Earlier she said the album should have been a little bit shorter. I completely agree with that. The album was amazing. It just dragged on a little bit. If that album yeah. was 13 songs, it would be oh, my album phenomenal. of the year. Easy. It would be my album of the year. Phenomenal. Easy. It's, and I said that when, uh, yeah. when I first For the video for Fan is fucking crazy. Like, all, everything that came out, the rollout, the yeah. video, everything that from Cardi B perfect. feature, not the one That's on Freaky, woman, but bro. the one on Jealousy. Mm-hmm. They don't make them Cold. like that. No Been to more. Atlanta, Salute. but bitches ain't brave. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Salute. I'm telling you, they don't not, they're not making them like that no more. Salute. That's a good one. Salute. Boy. All right. Uh, that was it for me. Y'all yeah. got anything else y'all want to talk about, chit-chat about? We still under two hours, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's really no, – do we miss anything? I don't have you heard Renee Rapp's album? I have not. I've sure. heard Renee rap. I'm a fan of Renee rap. I told you I watched yeah. that show that I'm not gonna say I watched. I gotta be honest, sure. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that uh, salute. You need Renee. to watch. Good um, album. Very good album. Just, we'll, she's on the we'll show on about. HBO Max, but we'll talk. We'll, about we'll talk about that. Yeah. But she's we'll also playing out. Regina in the Mean Girls movie. Oh, she's a talent. she's, like, she's, a real she's talent bad, and she has a voice. She has a voice. I saw a video of her singing "Love on Top" she the has other day, and she even hit all of the. She hit the love. Okay, she has. She has a voice. So we did. I don't know, say Capricorn we, Queen. We definitely didn't miss it, but like they did the was the Oscars or the Emmys or whatever. Oh yeah, shout out to let's black talk about that, TV. Yeah. I love TV. Shout the out bear? to black people that won the awards. Of of course, shout yeah. out to my girl. I'm not gonna say her name. Someone, I don't know how to say her name. Okay, Ayo, Ayo. I think it's Ayo. Ayo, she's so fine, bro. She, I love that she woman. Is. I love that woman. I'm she ready for beautiful. season three. She, that's such a good woman. She dude. is amazing in every way. Everything I've, I've seen seriously. her in, though, she's been, she's amazing. Yeah. Did you see the movie she did with uh, the shorty? It's uh, on my list. Uh, with the the satire. It's yeah, a, it's on my list. It? It's a really I saw. Good. I've you seen a lot of. No, I don't know what it's called, but I know what you're talking about because I've seen clips of it on TikTok, and I'd be like, damn, I love her. Like. She's she good. produced that movie. She is cold, bro. Like it is. I'm and gonna, she's on Big Mouth too. When we get off of this, she's I'm on Big Mouth. You. Yeah, she voices. I don't remember who she voices, but she's on Big Mouth. I can hear it now. I literally can hear it now. I know exactly. But who the you're bear. Talking about. Yeah. Oh my god. So what are y'all favorite shows y'all watched last year? The since wire. we're here. Ooh, I know my top three. Why is that show like eight times? Like, come on. I'm really oh, watching yeah. The Wire again right now. <laughs> oh my god, I watched The Wire last year. Actually, if I were to do top five, I'd do The Sopranos, The Wire, New Girl. Vampire Diaries and the Bear. Listen, your first. Li- oh, let's just go top five shows ever right now. Go ahead. Top five shows ever. Wait, first, because I, I, I be do want to mention the shows from last year before I do that. Oh, yeah. The Bear, yep. White Lotus. Um, Taylor, come here real quick. White Lotus <laughs> is really like that because I heard it's Yo, really good. White Lotus. That is Succession. Is like that. Succession. White Lotus Succession. is Succession. Succession. It's on our list. So we're Yo. watching, um, we're finishing Glee right now, and then we're going to watch The Office because Nef- Nelson's never seen it in mm-hmm. full. What? So I was like, no, you have to see The okay, Office. Okay, so full. wait. Before you do, before you watch The Office, watch, watch Lotus. Because White Lotus is two seasons and it's 10 episodes, and you'll be oh. done fast. But it's okay. one of those things you're going to want to keep watching because you're like, where the fuck is this going? Did like, it the get White renewed? Lotus is, Gold, huh? Did it get renewed? Yes, it's season three is coming. Oh, thank God. Because um, I'm tired of watching these bro. shows that like don't get renewed. That shit for happened to me. Season. I was going to say, I don't watch a lot of shows, but that shit happened to me last year. And it Lovecraft? Really no, no, no. Oh. Winning time. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even watch season two because it I know it so, didn't get renewed. I didn't know it. I, I knew it was like up in the air, so I was still watching well, it. They didn't it's do so good, good promo for it, so it's yeah. like... Uh, and another one is Invincible. I started watching Invincible. Invincible last year. is oh, fucking yeah. crazy. And Invincible is fucking fire. Okay, top five shows. I'll oh, you watch Invincible? Yeah, 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 I didn't know y'all watched Invincible. I oh, yeah, fucking yeah. love Invincible. Bro, I love Invincible. Crazy. I love Invincible is fucking fire. He pushed dude through the counter. <laughs> Just five shows. Around. All right, top five shows. What are, What are yours? I got to think about that. From last year or just ever? No, just ever. Because I was oh. I know. Oh, it should oh. probably name them off like oh, that. Oh, yeah. My so top while five you shows, do that, yeah. let me Yeah, I'm going to go first. So first, with the wire. For sure. Second, Wire Sopranos. Is so crazy. Third. Y'all know my unserious nigga? This is where Family Guy got to fall. I got I to gotta have Family Guy 3. Four, black sitcom, maybe controversial. I'm going with my wife and kids. I was about to say, are you going to say my wife oh, and kids? I got to go my, my wife, wife and, and kids. kids is so slept out. That shit I'm is funny. You, I got to go with my wife and kids. And fifth, The Office. Salute. That's fair. I've, I've right. cried watching The Office before. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I cried during Pam and Jim's wedding. Bro, you get to the end. The it's, song? A, it's a couple times I'm watching that shit. Like, yo, she said, "What you say to my dad? Like, why you know, why you leaving my mom?" <laughs> he said, "I just told him I fuck with you, Shawty. Like, you don't." Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Office is Hall of Fame. All right, top five. Number one, my favorite show of all time is The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That's never going to change. Okay. Real. Um, that was my childhood show. That's Real. Fuck this Fresh Prince. My bad. My bad. My bad. Whoa. My bad. What? <laughs> How? <laughs> what did we do? 
<laughs> definitely got to cut that out. <laughs> so number one is the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Number two, my honest to God, bro, I Do think it. it's Snowfall. Do I, it, go. I think Snowfall is my second yeah. favorite show I've ever Snowfall's watched. Snowfall is also in my top. Number five. three is Parks and Recreation. Um, Real? that's my silly show. Um, I like Parks more than I like The Office. I think Parks is. I think The Office might be a little bit funnier, but the Parks I like character development and I like really getting to know characters and liking yeah. characters and believing these people are these characters <laughs> and I think Parks and Rec not I think Parks and Rec does that better than The Office does um four Family Guy <laughs> hey bro Family Guy is my shit Yo. like Family Guy is my real 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 guys. shit um and Why number do five women not like I don't like Family Guy number five thank God because Taylor love Family Guy number five is Secession <laughs> Um, Secession. Really? Damn. Damn. Look. All right. I didn't tell you to watch Secession. It's because on my it's list. Long. It's long. No, watch, it's still on my list. And watch White Lotus first. But when you get to Secession, your jaw is going to drop. And how they made this show interesting. Because if I told you a very baseline about yeah. what the show is, you'd be like, I will never in my life watch Isn't that. Isn't it about somebody dies and like they're trying to see who gets no. like, the inheritance? No. Oh. No. No, he's supposed no. to die, but he doesn't die. Family no. Guy did a crazy joke about it already bro, them niggas bro. are fast Lift, yes it is a hilarious just listen bro secession is such a good fucking show like i usually get mad when white people clean up at the wards yeah. they deserved it and i mean like with every ounce okay. of me they deserved every award that show got that show is perfect television from mm, from episode okay. one yeah. to the last episode it doesn't miss a beat now it's one of those things where you're not going to understand you're not going to care as much about season one until about s seven episodes and you're going to be like what the fuck is going on and why am i watching this and why are people acting like this is so good it took a minute for me and taylor really to get to episode six or seven because we just kept being like i'm not watching this but when we did once we caught episode seven on we was in here at three o'clock in the morning on tuesday watching that show like no, i crazy. couldn't stop watching I was coming here, getting up, that's making breakfast, you know that's sitting down, show. and watching TV. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So that would be five. But I, I left out. I one of the shows will be replaced by Grey's Anatomy if we weren't on camera. Oh God! <laughs> I'm about to have like ten honorable mentions. <laughs> I got on a Beyonce shirt, so I'm not gonna tell y'all that Grey's Grace. Anatomy is my favorite show of all time. <laughs> but honestly, but just, I'm gonna have like five honorable mentions. So okay. bear with me. My favorite show of all time is Insecure. Okay. I got to watch Insecure. You, all black people need to watch Insecure. I've heard. Yeah, it's like, literally, good. for me, it's like I was, I watched it when it first premiered when I was 18, mm. 17 or 18. And mm. just like keeping up with it consistently and growing up with the characters as they were growing up and they're just going through life was already one thing. But then to rewatch it, I've seen it like four times. Oh, and okay. then to go back and watch it again and like, be 2021 20, seeing it and it's like life really is i could not imagine my life being like it is now when i was 18 and so it's just like damn and then the last season Issa ray is a is a yeah don't get me started uh All capricorn right. queen um <laughs> my second favorite would be breaking bad mm. that's on my watch list too. um three <laughs> i probably put game of thrones mm. that's not on my watch list. no 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 no, no, no. You, that's one shot i'll never watch no 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 i promise i'm not you don't have to try. Game of Thrones. When I say I'm not doing something, I'm not going to do it. I'm stuck like that. I was going to watch Game of Thrones and the last season dropped and niggas hated that shit. No, it's really bad, but yeah. the first, <laughs> but the seven seasons, like, yeah. but you have to think, like, it doesn't get bad to, like, the last two, three episodes. Okay. For an entire show. Okay. I can like, do that. Like, Game yeah. of Thrones is fucking crazy. I've seen a couple crazy scenes from Game of Thrones, too. No, it's so wild. Yeah. It's so intense. One of my coworkers yeah. was on season four, like, a week ago. She's on season seven now. So. Oh. Damn. All right. Four yeah. and five. Four... South Park. Oh, my God. That's a good one. South Park. So fucking funny, bro. Oh, my God. South Park. Five. So five would probably be Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Okay. Honorable mentions, The Wire. This, well, actually, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Oh, that's racist. Never mind. Nope. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah. I, was, uh, you get it? I got on Beyonce's shirt today, bro. I got a lot of um, shit. Honorable mention would be The Wire. Yep. Did I say The Sopranos? Nope. Honorable mention would be The Sopranos. I think Sopranos is one of the best shows of all time. Yeah. But me personally, I get really sentimental about shows that I like. So mm -hmm. like, I understand. I understand. I do too. All those shows have made me cry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would put My Wife and Kids in there. My mm -hmm. Wife and Kids, yeah, for sure. It might be too soon to tell, but for me personally, The Bear. Yo, listen, hold up. 
Everybody hates Chris. Yo, chill. Uh, honorable mention. Big, Man, big, big honorable mention. Chris. I forgot Chris. we had to mention that. Honorable, big honorable mention, mention dude. Oh, uh, my God. Shameless is also honorable mention for me. Shameless is and really good. Sweet Life is Zack and Cody is an honorable mention for me. Stop, because um, I was about to say Hannah Montana is one of mine. <laughs> SpongeBob. And if we're taking it there, Phineas and Ferb there. SpongeBob, Phineas and Ferb, and Timmy Turner are my yeah. three favorite cartoon shows all time. Yeah. Fairly Odd Parents is fucking crazy. Yeah, those would be my... I was an and Glee. Honestly, too. Glee. Because Glee finds a way... I respect Glee so much because it's like... Not only it's already hard enough for people to memorize lines, but you're memorizing lines in this intense choreography, yeah, yeah. and you're trying to cover some of the biggest songs of and all you time. Got pregnant by hot tub come, and <laughs> and like, but the drug like this, the like that show finds a way to like yeah. make you bust. Up. Jane Lynch, and it's crazy to say, but Jane Lynch is the best character on that Jane show. Jane Lynch is a cold. No, she, she cold. She's, she's cold as cold. fuck. Her she's character cold. on that show. I be belly laughing at her and Naya Rivera's character. And I will Rest say in peace, this, Naya Rivera. Because everyone Rest in this room peace. has lived in Atlanta or currently lives in Atlanta at one time. Atlanta is on my honorable mentions. No cap. That's It should be. I mean, Atlanta's fine. That shit's so fucking funny, bro. Funny. Especially now that it's over, like you kinda don't have to watch it like whole seasons at a time. Mm-hmm. Like I was really just going through like some of my favorite Atlanta episodes the other day. And that all episode when Paperboy was trying to just get his hair you cut. Should get it. Bro. That's probably my favorite episode in the show. I didn't finish it because, like, my issue with Atlanta was that, like, I didn't like how they took that long break and then yeah. they came back and, like, you're not going to give me no backstory as to how, like, this nigga was just struggling, like, yeah. the last episode I saw. And now yeah. he's performing in Paris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. they they kind of, like, because I think season three, like, whenever, it's crazy. I love the season three finale. But, like, it ends with him, like, getting on a flight to start, like, some tour. And they come back, and this nigga's, like, one of the biggest rappers ever. Like, <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and uh, the last honorable mention for me is. Um, oh, in The Simpsons. Sorry. Fuck, I've just forgot I forgot about, about The Simpsons. Shout out to Simpsons. What was my last honorable mention? Oh, oh, The Boondocks. Y'all oh, yeah. Fuck, yeah. The, boondocks, the fucking the boondocks, boondocks. for show. Sure. Damn, I just thought of something. Oh, the Kevin Hart limited series, True Story. It's crazy. That's it's really? a, it's seven ep- It's crazy. It's the best thing Kevin Hart ever did. Easily, like mm. like so far in a way, easily the best thing he has ever it's done. Better it's than Real Husbands of Hollywood. It's better than. Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Real Husbands of there, Hollywood there, is there, funny there as hell. Was, there was nothing funnier than that nigga taking his shirt off and having a Mariah tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga having that fucking tattoo was so funny, bro. Oh my Yo, god, that shit. Was it's, it's 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 not better. It's right right yeah. there. It like movie stand okay. up. Like it's the not stand up, but it's y'all the watch best rap thing. shit, huh? Do y'all watch no, rap uh, shit? Uh, watch rap shit. It's only two seasons. Mm-hmm. The episodes are thirty minutes, just like okay. every other Easter Ray show. It's kind of like based. Not necessarily based on the city girls, but mm. like there's these two girls. They grow. They live in Miami, yeah. and they become friends. And one of them is a scammer, and then the other one like has a baby, a baby mama, ain't shit mom, and she just trying to make it work. And they start rapping together. Issa Rae right. is a fucking legend. All right, right to the bottom two hours. All right, we can we can end here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Everybody for listening again. That is G Six Grace. She will be you. Will, she will be seeing her very frequently. I don't know what that yes. was, but you'll be seeing her very frequently. Uh, if you guys, I say this every time. Any interns want to do social media, anything, uh, social media, TikToks, editing, anything you want to internship with, the little chatter on the side. Let me know, please. DM me. My socials are in the bio. Our DM is his socials are in the bio as well. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to Grace's YouTube channel. Please follow my TikTok. Please follow Grace's TikTok. Both will be in the bio. Um, thank you very much. You guys are amazing. Salute to the twins. Salute to the women. Gang, and y'all gang, have gang. an amazing week. Hi,